Okay, hi everyone. Um, can you hear me? Okay, uh, if you can hear me, could you type something in the chat or just uh, check off? Um, okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, welcome to today's uh, React Hacker School. Okay, so before we start, uh, if you want to access the slides, okay, you can get it here. So bit.ly slash React Hacker School 2020. Okay, so um, yeah, so let me first introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Rihan. Okay, so I'm a third year comp science and math student at NUS and also a core team member of NUS Hackers. Okay, and uh, currently I'm also taking an LOA to do an internship at AWS or Amazon Web Services. Okay, and a fun fact, okay, so uh, I first learned React from this workshop two years ago. Okay, and uh, it was quite helpful for me. Okay, so hopefully, you know, this workshop will be very useful for you today. Okay, so this is the plan for today. Okay, so first uh, we'll start with setting up the environment. Okay, so making sure you have all the correct, the necessary tools. Okay, uh, for this workshop. Okay, so afterwards I'll just uh, give a short introduction to React. Okay, so you know like what is React, how does React work, and uh, why do people use React. Okay, then for the rest of the workshop, it will be split into two parts. Okay, so the first part uh, is a simple tic-tac-toe game. Okay, so this one is to uh, introduce you to like basic React concepts. Okay, such as like components, states, props. Okay, and the second part, okay, you'll be doing something more practical. Okay, so you'll be building a website. Okay, uh, and you'll learn a few more concepts, okay, such as like React Router, Material UI, and we'll also be deploying our application to the internet, okay, using a service called Netify. Okay, so at the end of uh, this workshop, okay, so uh, we'll be building an application, and the application will look something like this. Okay, so you have like a website, simple website, okay, and then uh, if you click on games, okay, then there will be like a tic-tac-toe game that you can play. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's what we're doing for today. Okay, and uh, just a couple of things I want to say before we start, okay, is that uh, firstly, React can be quite complicated. Okay, so please feel free to ask questions. Okay, so uh, I think when I just started two years ago, uh, I also attended a number of these hacker school workshops. And sometimes the speaker may go a bit fast, okay, or sometimes I may get a bit lost. Okay, so if you're uns unsure of anything, okay, so just uh, feel free to ask. Okay, we have a small group today. Okay, so also chances are that you know someone else has the same questions as you. Okay, so just a disclaimer. Okay, so this workshop might take more than three hours, okay, because there's quite a bit of content. Okay, so if you need to leave halfway, okay, so just uh drop off. Okay, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so uh, Let's start with setting up the environment. Okay, so uh, for today's workshops, there's two ways you can uh, follow, follow along. Okay, so first uh, is to set up locally. Okay, and the second is to develop online. Okay, so uh, I'll recommend uh, setting up uh, locally, that means on your own computer. Okay, so uh, because if you use the online one, right, you'll be able to follow along with the first part of the workshop. Okay. Uh, but you will not be able to follow along for the, it won't be able to code out the second part of the workshop. Okay, but uh, if for some reason, you know, you cannot install like these tools uh, on your computer, okay, then you can just uh, click on this link in the slides. Okay, so it will bring you to codepen.io. Okay, so I also noticed that a few people have joined. Okay, so uh, for those who have joined, if you want to access the slides, okay, you can access it at uh, bit.ly slash react dash hacker school. Uh, dash 2020. Okay, so uh, I've uh, sent the link inside the chat. Okay, so uh, so far so good. Okay, so uh, for the setting up locally, okay, so uh, I didn't send out any uh, instructions for installations during the email. Okay, that's because uh, usually most people won't set up. Lah, okay, so and they'll, they'll end up setting up during the workshop itself. Okay, so uh, there's a few things that you have to install. Okay, so if you are using Windows, okay, uh, uh, please uh, install this a uh, few tools. Okay, so the first one is called Git Bash. Okay, so this is to allow you to have like a terminal to work with. Okay, then uh, or if you really use another terminal such as like WSL, okay, that's also okay. Um, yeah, so then uh, also please install Node.js and Yarn, okay, as well as uh, text editor of your choice. If you already have a text editor, that's fine. Okay, but uh, otherwise, uh, I think Visual Studio Code is not bad. Okay, so you can download it from here. Okay, so as for what all these do, okay, I'll explain it later. 
Okay, so for the time being, just install. Okay, so if you're using Mac OS, okay, the installations are a lot simpler. Okay, so what you do, okay, so you go to the terminal. Okay, so if you just uh, click on command space, okay, then you search for terminal. Uh, okay, then you'll bring it to like a terminal. Then what you do right, is just uh, copy these commands and paste it inside this uh, terminal. Okay, so then you just do for all four of these. Okay, then uh, you'll install it for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give it maybe about 10 minutes okay, for the installation. Okay, and if along the way you have any, any difficulties, okay, so just uh, feel free to raise inside the chat. Okay, or you can unmute and just uh, ask me directly. Okay, so just a check, right? How many of you are uh, from NUS? Okay, so uh, if you are, okay, just like check off on the this one. Okay, just just curious, huh? Ah, okay. Seems like most of you are from NUS. Okay, then the rest of you are you all from uh, you're not from NUS? I see. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, give about 10 minutes. Okay, so when you guys are done, right, can you all like check off on the, uh, uh, just check off on the participants list lah. Yeah, so that I know that you're done. Okay, in the meantime, if you have any questions about the installation, okay, so uh, just feel free to ask. Okay, so I think a couple more of you have uh, just joined. Okay, so uh, if you, okay, you can refer to the link that I sent in this chat, in the, in the Zoom chat. Okay, so this is the link to the slides. Okay, so right now we are at the installation step. Okay, so uh, basically the setup, Okay, so we will, we are, okay, so if you're using Windows, okay, you can install like these following tools here. Okay, if you're using Mac, then uh, follow these instructions uh, to install. Is anyone planning to uh, set up online? Okay, that means uh, develop online. Okay, if you are, can you click on the no button? Okay, so that uh, I'm aware. Lah. Oh, okay. Looks like everyone's planning to set up locally. Okay.
Okay, so for those who have uh, done setup, right? Okay, so here's how you can verify that the installation went correctly. Okay, so if you go to uh, VS Code, okay, so if you, uh, for Mac users, okay, so if you go to Launchpad, uh, you should be able to see that VS Code is installed. Okay, so you click on VS Code. Okay, you go to Terminal, uh, New Terminal. Okay, on the, on the top here, you click on New Terminal. Okay, then if you do like a node, Okay, you should be given this prompt, and then you can do something like one plus one, okay, then it will give you two. Okay, so for the Windows users, okay, uh, if you go to VS Code, okay, so uh, same thing, okay, so you go to the top, uh, click on new terminal. Okay, so uh, a prompt here might be different. Okay, so uh, if it doesn't say bash, right, here. Okay, so what you do, you go down to select default shell. Okay, uh, and you click on git bash. Okay, so if you're using git bash, you click on git bash. If you're using uh, WSL, you click on WSL. Okay, so I think by default, uh, it's uh, Windows PowerShell. So you should change this to either WSL or git bash. Okay, so once you change it to git bash, okay, and you close the terminal and open it again. Okay, so you should see on the side here, there should be bash. Okay, uh, then uh, to verify that you have uh, Node.js installed, okay, so you just type Node, okay, and you'll be uh, given a prompt. Okay, so you can just do one plus one, and then you'll get two. Yeah, okay, so if you have any issues, uh, just uh, feel free to uh, raise in the chat. Uh, yep, the note version, as long as it's not too old, okay, as long as it's like version 10 and above, it should be fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll just give it another few more minutes, maybe two more minutes, okay, then we'll start. Uh, with the rest. Oh, okay. So for React, right? Uh, as long as the node version is not too old, it'll work. La. So in general, version 10 and above is generally okay. La. Before before that, it's like a bit too old already. Okay, so uh, is everyone okay? Okay, so I see some of you never take off. Okay, I'm not sure if it's because uh, you're not following or if you are still stuck. Okay, uh, but then the next part I'm going to do is just an introduction to React. Okay, so during this time, you can still continue to install. Okay, the coding will happen uh, maybe after 20, 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so uh, what is React? Okay, so uh, React is an open source uh, JavaScript library used for building front end applications. Okay, so it was created in 2011 by Facebook engineer Jordan Walk. Okay, so it's been around for quite a while and it is uh, currently maintained uh, by Facebook. Okay, so uh, React is mainly used for building web interfaces. 
okay, is like when you access a browser, okay, so that uh, what you see, okay, so that, that what you see is uh, what the purpose of React is. Okay, so it's used by uh, websites, you know, such as Facebook, Instagram web, Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, okay, to build their websites. Okay, so uh, in order to understand, you know, where React fits in the big picture, okay, so uh, I think I'll just briefly go through, you know, how the websites work. Okay, so for example, when you uh, open your browser and you go to, for example, google.com, okay, uh, what happens behind the scenes is that the browser will send a HTTP request to Google server. Okay, so if you're going google.com, you're going to Google server. Okay, and what is a server? A server is just a computer somewhere on the internet, uh, connected to the internet, okay, and it's like running 24 seven. Okay, so when you make this HTTP request to this server, Okay, this server is going to respond to you with uh, some files. Okay, so namely HTML, CSS, and JS files. Uh, okay, uh, I heard some echo. Okay, but uh, yeah, so anyway, the server will return uh, some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. The browser will take this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files and you display what you see on the browser. Okay, so now uh, let's zoom in to what goes on inside the server. Okay, so nowadays for uh, modern web applications, it's typically structured as three different tiers. Okay, so you have the front end, the back end, and the database. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, the front end, you know, is what you see. Okay, so uh, for example, if I go to Facebook, right, so what I see here, okay, so this is the front end. Okay, and this can be built using React. We can build with like uh, other front end frameworks, you know, such as Angular, Vue, or Spell. Okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so you can think of the front end as just a shell. Okay, it does not itself process or contain any data. Okay, so you will have to retrieve data from the back end. Okay, so the back end is where all the data is processed. Okay, so uh, some examples of back end servers are like Express, you know, or you have like Ruby on Rails. Laravel, ASP.NET. Okay, so these are just some examples of back end. Okay, so the back end uh, it processes data, but in itself it does not uh, store the data. Okay, so the data right is uh, stored is stored in a database. Okay, so uh, yeah, so some examples are like MySQL, MongoDB, or Postgres. Okay, so this is how the modern uh, web application looks like. Okay, so I hope this helps you to appreciate. You know, where React uh, is inside the uh, architecture. Yeah. Uh, so, any questions at this point? Okay. Uh, if not, moving on. Okay. So, the next question is how does React work? Okay. So, uh, before we talk about React, okay, let's uh, talk about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay. So, uh, no, uh, the HTML. Okay, so we, I remember I said there are three files uh, earlier. Okay, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that is written by the server. Okay, so the HTML defines the structure or the skeleton of a website. Okay, so the CSS, you know, adds styling to the website. Okay, makes the website looks nice, uh, looks pretty. Okay, and the JavaScript makes a website dynamic. Okay, so dynamic meaning if your website has a button, right? So if you just use HTML and CSS to build a website, Okay, you can't do anything with your button. Okay, so JavaScript allows you to attach, like for example, event handlers to this button. So when you click on the button, then the button will do something. Okay, so this is how JavaScript makes a website dynamic. Okay, so these three uh, types of languages, okay, so they form like the basis for the web. Okay, and uh, actually in essence, right, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right, at, at the very, uh, okay, they are, they are just a text files. La. Okay, so they are just text files. You can open it with Notepad and it looks just like a regular text file. Okay, so the question is, you know, if I have a plain text file, how does the browser understand you know, what's going on inside? Okay, so the browser uses something called the document object model. Okay, so uh, it will take in this HTML file, okay, that defines the skeleton of the website. Okay, and the browser will convert it into a tree structure. Okay, so the root element will be the HTML. So this will correspond to like the outermost text, okay, which is the HTML tag. 
Okay, then you have like the head and the body element. Okay, so these are wrapped inside the HTML tag. Okay, so this represents like the child of this uh, HTML. Okay, so the browser will take this plain text file and convert it into this tree structure. Okay, so this tree structure is also known as the DOM. Okay, so this tree structure will then be further converted by the browser into what you see. Okay, so to give you a better visualization of how this works, okay, so if I go to, for example, Facebook, okay, and I uh, right click on Facebook and I go to inspect, okay, so you can see the first tab here, elements inside this uh, new window. Okay, this thing you see here, right, is actually the DOM. Okay, so this is the tree structure. Okay, so if I minimize all the way, okay, so at the topmost you have HTML, then you have the body, then you can expand the body by clicking on this triangle. Okay, then you can see all the elements inside the body. Okay, so it kind of follow this tree structure. Okay, and uh, each of these elements in this tree structure will correspond to an element that you see on the web page. Okay, so for example, if I select an element, okay, on the page, okay, so like this element will correspond to like this component that you see in the website. Okay, so this is uh, the DOM. Okay, so there are three parts. Okay, from the plain text file to the DOM, and then to the website itself. Okay, so uh, let's talk a bit more about, you know, websites in our past. Okay, so if you use websites like maybe like 15, 20 years ago, okay, so uh, when you click on the link on the web page, right, uh, what happens is that the whole website is reloaded. Okay, so uh, the server will send back a new. Okay, so what happens is that uh, when you click on something on the web page, right, uh, your browser will send a HTTP request. Okay, and then uh, the the server will respond with a new HTML file. Okay, and the website is reloaded. Okay, so what that means is that the DOM, right, uh, here. Okay, so every time I click on something, right, so if I click on like for example the comments, okay, on this NUS whispers post, okay. Okay, this one is a bit long. So if I click on this one, 10 comments. Okay, so if I click on something, right, it doesn't actually reload the whole page, right? Uh, but in the past, what happens is when you click it, you'll reload the whole page. And the whole DOM here, right, will be, uh, how do you say, re-rendered. Okay, so one example of this is uh, Wikipedia. Okay, so let's say I go to Wikipedia, the main page. Okay, so uh, there are some things that are the same, right? No matter uh, which Wikipedia page you go to. Okay, so for example, uh, this left bar here. Okay, so actually when you go to any page, there's no need to kind of uh, rebuild this entire sidebar. Okay, but that's what happens. So when I click on the link, right? You see that the whole page refreshes, and you can see like there's a like a, the the sidebar also refreshes. Okay, so this is kind of like the old school kind of paradigm. Okay, so when you click on something, the whole page refreshes. Okay, so nowadays, okay, we have something called single page applications. Okay, so the application is uh, one single page. Okay, what this means is that you know when I click on something, uh, instead of reloading the entire page. Okay, the DOM is mutated using JavaScript. Okay, so uh, I'll show you an example. Okay, so like just now, right, when I click right on the number of comments, right, you don't know the whole page. You only change the parts where it needs to be changed. Okay. Then let's say uh, F bar should always be the same no matter where I go to. Okay, so for example, if I click on the home, right, okay, so now you watch the DOM. Okay, so when I click on like this button, right, or well, you see that there are some purple flashes in the DOM, okay? These purple flashes, right, uh, means that a mutation is happening at that DOM, okay? Something is being changed at that DOM. Okay, so instead of changing the entire DOM, I only change part of it, okay? So this is the idea behind a single page application, okay? So ideally, okay, only the elements that require change are changed, okay? So React itself is a single page application, yeah, okay, so the next question you might have is, you know, how does React know what needs to be changed? Right, how does it know when I click on this button, right, uh, I should, what, what are the elements inside here that I should change? Okay, so React uses something known as a biffing algorithm. 
Okay, so what is a diffing algorithm? Okay, so basically it's an algorithm to compare two things, two things, you know, and identify the differences between them. Okay, so for example, if you are familiar with Git, okay, so Git uses a diffing algorithm to ide identify changes to your files. Okay, so uh, one example is, uh, okay, so for today's uh, workshop, okay, the code can be found in this uh, repository. Okay, so github.com slash qbhan, my name, slash react dash hacker school. Okay, uh, so if you go to this uh, repository, okay, you go to this URL, and you add a slash compare at the end, Okay, it will bring you to uh, this page. Okay, so what I've done for this uh, workshop, okay, so I split this workshop into 12 different parts. Okay, so if I uh, click on this uh, master thing, okay, so this is actually showing you the different branches uh, for this repository. Okay, so you can see there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so each of these, right, uh, corresponds to like later on uh, a point in time, okay, how the code should look like. Okay, so after the first part of the workshop, okay, the code will look something like this. Okay, so if I go in the source folder, okay, so I see there are two files. Okay, then when I go to the end of the, uh, like the, the workshop, okay, then I'll see that there are more files inside. Okay, so what the different algorithm uh, will allow us to do, okay, is to see what are the changes that were made. Okay, so let me go back to just now. Uh, that link. Okay, so my repository slash compare. Okay, so it will allow you to compare two branches. Okay, so let's say I go to the first lesson. Okay, so you'll see that uh, it allows us to compare the changes for that branch and the master branch. Okay, so what changes? Okay, so you can see the file that is changed, right? Is the source slash index.js file. Okay, so what has changed? Okay, there's uh, two lines of changes. Okay, so the diffing algorithm will basically take these two files. Okay, it will find out what is different between those two files and you'll highlight what are the changes. Okay, so for everything else that hasn't been changed, right, uh, it just leaves it alone. Okay, so this is how the diffing algorithm works. Okay, so in like, uh, this is also how React works. Okay, so React uses something known as the diffing algorithm. Okay, so when you click on a button and something changes, okay, it will use this different algorithm to identify what has changed. Okay, and it will only change those particular parts of the DOM instead of reloading the entire DOM. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point in time? Okay. Uh, then uh, if not, I'll move on. Okay, so how does uh, React uh, apply this different algorithm. Okay, so internally, uh, React has something known as the virtual DOM. Okay, so uh, actually what you saw on this Facebook page right here, this DOM, right? This is known as the browser DOM, okay, or the real DOM. Okay, so React on its own, it will maintain another DOM, okay, and it's known as the virtual DOM. Okay, so for React, right, all changes uh, are received by the virtual DOM. Okay, so you click on the button or you change another page, Okay, so you will, all changes will be received by the virtual DOM. Okay, and then uh, React will compute what are the changes that need to be done. Okay, and then these uh, changes will be propagated into the browser DOM. Okay, so uh, it kind of looks something like this. Okay, so you have a virtual DOM and the browser DOM. Okay, so when there's a state change, you click on the button. Okay, so for example, right, uh, you make a change to like, one React component. Okay, so React will find out what else has changed inside the virtual DOM. Okay, so it says, oh, because uh, this element changed, then the element that's connected to it also changed. Okay, so you'll compute the diff to see that, oh, these two elements need to be changed. Okay, then uh, it will do a re-render. Okay, but you only re-render the parts that have been changed. So like the rest of this, uh, the blue parts, right, they are not touched at all. Okay, and these changes, right, will be propagated into the browser DOM. Okay, so this is uh, how React works. Uh, uh, under the hood. Okay, so uh, next part. Okay, so why do people use React? Okay, so firstly, React is fast. Okay, why? Because uh, as I mentioned, okay, so React only changes the elements that need to be changed. 
okay, inside the DOM. Also, the algorithm used for uh, computing the diff is very fast. Okay, so uh, if you see, uh, you only changes the file that needs to be changed. Okay, and the computation of the diff itself is fast. Okay, so the whole process is actually very fast. Okay. Uh, the next reason is that React is very intuitive. Okay, so if you're familiar with like JavaScript, okay, you'll know that you know you cannot write uh, HTML inside JavaScript. Okay, so what React uses is something called JSX or JavaScript XML, which allows you to write like HTML uh, directly inside JavaScript. Okay, so if you use plain JavaScript, right, and you want to create a div element, okay, uh, so what you'll do is something like this. So you have like, uh, you'll assign a variable, you know, and you'll create an element of type div, Okay, then you'll create a text node of type hello world. You'll attach this hello world to like this div element using this append child. Okay, so uh, it doesn't look very intuitive and it's a lot of steps. Okay, uh, whereas for React, because it uses JSX, you can do something like this. Okay, so it's a lot more intuitive. Okay, so don't worry if you don't understand uh, what's going on here. Okay, so you'll probably make more sense to you when we're going through the tutorial later, but just know that React is like more intuitive. Okay, and the last reason is that uh, React is widely used. Okay, so there's a large community for React. Okay, and when there's a large community, that means there's a lot of like packages, there's a lot of documentation. Okay, and it's kind of like a cycle. So because of that, then more people start using React. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, ultimately React has become like a very big, uh, it's a very, a commonly used library, okay, and that's also the reason why a lot of people use it. Okay, so uh, before we actually start coding, I want to introduce a few more additional terminologies that you might not be familiar with. Okay, so just now, uh, during the installation, right, I asked you to install Node.js and YAN. Okay, so Node.js, right, is uh, JavaScript runtime. Okay, so what a run JavaScript runtime is, right, uh, basically allows you to execute like JavaScript code outside a browser. Okay, so if you're talking about like 15, 20 years ago, right, JavaScript could only be run inside the browser. Okay, so someone uh, had a genius idea, okay, to take the JavaScript, uh, the thing that runs JavaScript inside the browser, take it out of the browser and put it in a separate application. Okay, so this application is called Node.js. Okay, and uh, React.js, okay, so React is a package inside Node.js. Okay, so if you want to run a React application, it has to be run, on Node.js. Okay, and what is YAN? Okay, so YAN is a, a package manager for Node.js. Okay, so it manages the installations of libraries for a Node.js project. Okay, so for example, if I have a Node.js project, okay, I want to convert it into a React project. Okay, so I'll use YAN to install React into that Node.js project. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're done with the introduction for React. Okay, does uh, anyone have any questions at this point? Uh, any questions about maybe the React itself, you know, how React works? Uh, or like maybe you're not so sure about what Node.js is. Okay, uh, then if we're all good to go, okay, we'll start with the uh, coding. Okay, so the first part will be building the tic-tac-toe application. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'll actually be following along with the official uh, React tutorial okay, on the website. Okay, the reason is, uh, I think the tutorial is really good. Okay, I, I don't think there's a better tutorial than the one that is created by them. Okay, another thing that's good about using the tutorial right, is that, uh, in case I speak too fast for some of you, okay, my pace is too fast for some of you, okay, and maybe you fall behind. Okay, so you can actually follow along with uh, this tutorial you know, to catch up. Okay, or the other reason, you know, is if you are too fast, okay, you feel that I'm speaking too slowly and you want to go a bit more ahead, okay, then you can follow along with this tutorial, you know, to uh, kind of get a sensing of what's going to come. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, as I mentioned earlier, okay, there'll be the, the, the code for this uh, tutorial can be found in my GitHub repository. Okay, so GitHub slash TVHAN slash React Hacker School. Okay, and if you uh, want to see uh, where I am right now. Okay, so you can like uh, look through the different branches okay, and follow along. Okay, so for each of my slides, right, I've added like uh, uh, like this bracket here, bracket master. Okay, so uh, later on, you know, when I'm doing other parts of the slides, right, you can see actually at which point in time 
uh, my code is. Uh. Okay, so for example, I'm at this slide, right, and you don't know where I am, right? Okay, then you can just go to the branch here, you know, and select three dash state. Okay, so the reason is uh, last time when I attended these tutorials, right, so sometimes uh, like some technical problem happened and I'm a bit behind. Okay, so then I, I look at the slides, right, I don't know where the speaker is at. Okay, so uh, this is kind of like to help you like, synchronize up. Uh. Okay, so okay, so let's uh, get our hands dirty. Okay, so now uh, if you go back to the terminal, okay, so uh, I hope you guys all have like a, a VS Code open, okay, and in a terminal. Okay, so uh, the the step for creating a red application, okay, you just can just run this. Okay, so mpx. Okay, so npx create React app. Okay, so this will create like a standard uh, React application for you. And then you will type in the name of the application. So in this case, I'm just going to call my React application. You can call yours anything. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do the same for uh, Windows. Okay, so I have a Okay, so I just uh, go into the directory that I want and I can just type npx create react app uh, react application. Okay, so uh, if anyone has problems, okay, just uh, feel free to raise in the chat. Okay, so uh, I think someone uh, privately message me that they cannot open bash in a VS code. Uh, okay, so uh, if you have any problems, just uh, uh, feel free to unmute and speak or you can just uh, text in the chat. Okay, so uh, probably this will take a couple of minutes. Okay, so what you can do after that, okay, you CD into the folder that you just, okay, so like this command will create a folder called Red Application. So CD allows you to enter this uh, folder. Okay, so I do CD React Application. Okay, so I can do the same here. CD React Application. Okay, then uh, what you can do, right, uh, is run yarn, start. Okay, and this will open up a browser. Okay, and in that browser, uh, you just wait for a few seconds, you should be able to see uh, this React icon. Okay, so I'll do the same for the Windows. Okay, so I can run yarn, start. Okay, so you open up a new browser. Okay, and you open the link at localhost 3000. Uh, then just wait for a few seconds, then you'll see like uh, this red icon. Okay, then uh, if you are okay with this step, right, could you check off? Otherwise, if you have problems, right, uh, you can click on the no. La. Okay, so seems like a number of you are okay. 
Uh, I'll just give it like until 150. Okay, so for the rest to catch up. Okay, so is uh, everyone okay? Uh, I see some of you haven't checked off. Uh, if it's not working for you or there's some problems, can you click on the no, like the cross? Okay, uh, I think maybe some of them are ARK, AFK. Okay, so uh, I'll just continue. Okay, so after you are done, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so delete everything from the source folder. Okay, so sorry, uh, you, okay, so you have to open the project okay, inside. Uh, you have to open the project where the application is. Okay, so you can go to VS Code, okay, open folder, look for the folder where your application is, okay, then uh, open. Okay, then you should be able to see the files here. Oh, okay, also for me, it opens a new uh, VS Code terminal. Okay, so I'll just close the other one. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, so it closed the other window. Okay, so I just do yarn. Okay, so uh, look for the folder where you ran your application. Okay, and then open it inside VS Code. Okay, so open folder. Uh, okay, Charles, uh, if you go to the terminal, right, uh, and you type node, right, uh, what does it say? So note. And does it give you this uh, prompt here?
Mm, okay, so uh, command not found create React app. Yeah. So do you run this uh, command npx create React app your application? Okay, yeah, anyway, for the rest, right, uh, you, sh you should go to your source folder. Okay, you see that there are a number of things inside here. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do is just uh, select all of them. Okay, and just uh, delete everything inside here. Okay. Uh, so you'll probably get some error. Okay, failed to compile. Okay, that's all right, because that's because you just remove uh, some components. Okay, so then uh, what you want to do after this is uh, create two files. Okay, so you call the first one index.css, you call the other one uh, index.js. Okay, and uh, in the slides I've included uh, two links. Okay, so the first link is for the index.css. Okay, so you just go back to the index.css file and copy and inside and save. Okay, then you do the same for the .js file. Okay, so you copy everything inside here and you paste it inside index.js. Okay, so oh, okay, so another thing that I forgot to add inside here. Okay, so for each of these files, okay, sorry, as in for the, for the index.js file, okay, you add an additional line on top. Okay, so import react from uh, react. Okay, and uh, import React DOM from React DOM. Okay, so uh, I'll just copy and paste this into the slides. At these two lines to the start of your index.js file. Okay, so the first one is import React from React, the other one is import React from React DOM. So import React from Okay, so then now if you go back to, uh, okay, sorry, you need to add one more line also. Yeah, so sorry. Okay, so you have to import uh, dot slash index dot CSS. Okay, so, okay, so this will import the CSS file from the other, from here. Okay, so now if you go back to the application, you should be able to see like this tic tac toe grid. Okay, so you add these three lines to the start of your index.js file. Okay, so if you're okay, could you help me to check off? Oops, sorry, this is a React DOM. Sorry, yeah, I bet. So import React DOM. Okay, 
from react.com. Okay, my bad. Uh, okay, so Charles, uh, what what error do you get when you try to run uh, this npx create react app command? Okay, uh, Catherine, uh, for your, uh, maybe you can try copying the whole thing again. Okay, so go back to the index.js file, you copy and paste and then add the three lines again. Okay, it could be an error with the copy. Uh, for Charles, uh, okay, I'm not too familiar with your error because normally I don't use uh, Windows. Okay, but uh, let me Google and uh, see what is the uh, possible problem. Ah, okay, that's great. Okay, uh, is anyone else uh, facing any issues? Okay, does uh, anyone else need help for setting up or do you need more time for setup? Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll give another five more minutes. Okay, yeah, so usually uh, uh, the most issues will happen when we're trying to set up. Uh, Okay, so uh, it's okay to spend a bit more time for this. Okay, the, the thing is that I want uh, everyone to follow along uh, as much as possible. Okay, so uh, I'll come back at 2.05. Okay,
Mm, uh, hi, Catherine. Um, yeah. Sorry, where is this error happening? Or oh, index.js file. Mm, do you try recopying the files? Okay, the index.css and index.js files? Oh, okay. And then all the other files are also deleted, right? Uh, just checking. Uh, hi, Catherine. So sorry. Uh, okay, I'm trying to Google your problem uh, because I'm not too sure what the problem is. I never encountered it uh, before. Okay. Uh, it would be helpful if I can see your screen in some way. Mm. Okay, can um, I stop my screen sharing for the time being? I see. Okay, so it looks a bit. Uh, okay, I see. I think the copying might be a bit uh, wrong. Okay, so if you go back to the other, the code pen. Okay, yeah, so you can follow what I even suggested. So you uh, press Control A. And then Control C. Yeah, and then. I think you should be copying everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, this looks more correct. You can see that the highlighting is also correct. Lah. Okay, so uh, you can see the CSS file. Is it also? Okay, the CSS file looks okay. Also, something changes after you save it. I see.
Okay, uh, sorry, could you try to rename your file right from index.js to index.jsx? Uh, X at the back, yeah. Okay, and then uh, you uh, copy and paste. And then you save again. Oh, okay, so I think I'm using that source. Well, I think Ivan pointed out that you are missing a semicolon after the import. Uh, okay, so you just add a semicolon at the back. Okay, then maybe you try renaming back to index.js again. Okay, so hopefully uh maybe you try to okay you go you control c at the belt to compile click on the terminal then you control c then you run again hmm okay Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure why this is happening. Okay, so let me uh, just search again. Okay, so uh, I think the problem you have, right, is that when you save, right, your thing will try to format. Okay, so uh, I think you should try to disable that. Okay, so you should go to the settings, maybe. Settings. Uh, then if you just type format in the search. Hmm, okay, so looks like it's being turned off actually, format or save. Yeah, or maybe uh, you type control shift p uh, control shift p then type formatter okay then a uh, formatter config okay 
Oh, okay, then you can just change on save to false, the one at the top. Okay, so hopefully this will help to resolve. Okay, so uh, you just paste again. Uh, uh, you just copy from the index.js file and then you can just paste again. So hopefully now it will not format it. Okay, then if you try saving. Ah, huh, okay. Okay, maybe you try restarting the thing again. Maybe the changes didn't take effect. Okay, so uh, sorry to everyone else. Okay, so uh, you can actually look through the other slides first or look through the tutorial to uh, just uh, see what's going on ahead. Lah. Yeah, uh, so you, uh, you can just close and uh, restart it. Lah. Okay, so Catherine, if it doesn't work for you, right, uh, maybe you can try some other uh, text editor. And it's very strange. Uh, usually, Visual Studio Code is very cooperative, huh? so usually I don't have much issues with it. Oh, it's okay. So you can, uh, if it doesn't work for you, you can try another IDE called Atom. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's another alternative. Oh, okay, that's great. Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue. Okay, so hopefully everyone has uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay, so hopefully it's okay for everyone now. Sorry, yeah, uh, where I can't see the chat. Okay, so uh, I'll just take some time, you know, to go through the different files in the node application, okay, before we actually start coding. Okay, so at the base of the, uh, okay, so we just look through the different files. Okay, so there are a few files that will always be there uh, for every uh, Node.js application. Okay, so the first file is package.json. Okay, so this file, right, is kind of like the configuration for your project. Okay, so you have a name of the, the, the application. Okay, so red application. Okay, so the important uh, configurations, right, are these two. Okay, so dependencies and scripts. Okay, so the dependencies, right, refer to the packages that you need to install, okay, when you uh, use this project. Okay, so it's for example, if uh, someone else, you know, takes a project, right, and they want to develop your project, work on your project. Okay, so they'll need to have these packages installed. Okay, and where are these packages installed to? Okay, so this will be installed to this folder called node modules. Okay, so this is where all the packages are installed. Okay, you see that there's a lot of uh, folders. Okay, so you don't need to worry what all these do. You just have to know that these are the different packages, okay, that your application relies on. Okay, so you can see one of them is React, React DOM. 
Okay, so these are the important ones okay, for any React project. Okay, so you can think of it as React is a package in a Node.js application. Okay, so you have uh, this other configuration called scripts. Okay, so what this script allows you to do is uh, uh, run certain commands. Okay, so uh, like if you have a very long command, for example, right? Okay, so you can actually shorten this command by putting inside the scripts. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Okay, so when I run yarn start, right? Okay, what is happening right, is actually going to look in the scripts. Okay, so yarn is going to look inside the scripts. Okay, this package.json file. And it's going to see, oh, okay, so I have a command called start here. Okay, and if that's the case, I'm going to run this command uh, that comes after it. Okay, so I run yarn start. So you can see there's a, briefly you can see right, there's a, a React script start. Okay, so this is actually uh, what this script is for. So actually you can define your own one. Okay, so for example, I can do run and then uh, echo hello world. Okay, so what this is going to do is, uh, okay, it's hello. Okay, so what it's going to do, so now when I run yarn hello, or it's going to say hello to me, okay, or hello world. Okay, so this is what the script does. Okay, and these uh, two are important for most uh, projects. Okay, so you have the node modules, which is the installed library files used in this project. Okay, then there's another file called yarn.log. Okay, so you see that there's a lot of gibberish inside. Okay, so actually the dependencies here that you specify here, okay, is actually not enough for yarn uh, to know exactly what you want. Okay, so this can be a problem. Okay, so if I don't have this yarn.log file, okay, and uh, so for example, I'm using this, I'm developing on this computer, okay, and I want to develop this project on another computer, or my friend wants to work on this project from his computer. Okay, so this information is not enough to ensure that uh, our projects are consistent. Okay, the environment is consistent. So you need this additional yarn.log file with a lot of information to ensure that uh, everything is consistent between the projects. Okay, so uh, okay, so I think Quan Ming asked, okay, so where is the React scripts? Okay, so uh, you can actually find these scripts in the node modules slash dot bin file. Okay, so bin actually stands for binaries. Okay, see, so these are like executables, things that you can run. Okay, so if you use Windows, uh, then there's like a dot exe file, maybe, I think. Okay, so you should be able to find React scripts here. So this is just a command okay, that you can run. Okay, so this can be found in the dot bin folder inside the node modules. Yeah, okay, so for the yeah, 9.3.2, okay, with a uh, arrow, up arrow in front of it, yes, so it means uh, any version that is above 9.3.2. Yeah. Uh, yes, inclusive. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so these three files. Okay, so this belong to a uh, typical node application. Okay, so. Uh, for React itself, okay, so it has uh, two more folders. Okay, so one is the public folder and one is the source folder. Okay, so the public folder, right, uh, what you put inside here uh, is what you actually see when you open the, the React application. Okay, so if I run yarn start. Okay, so what is actually being displayed in the browser, right, by default, it will be the index.html file. Okay, so, uh, but then because uh, you're like uh, by default, right, uh, for all applications, you know, React or not React, okay, you will always try to look for the index.html file and you'll render it there. Okay, so if I go to slash index.html, okay, I will be able to see the application also. Okay, just by that by default, right, there's no need to include this uh, index.html. Okay, so like this is enough. Okay, so all these other assets inside here. Okay, so you have a picture of the rare icon. Okay, or you have an icon for the rare. Okay, so these are all stored inside the public folder. And you can actually access them uh, by just typing a slash, then followed by their name. Okay, so logo192.png. Ah, okay, then I'll be able to see the picture here. 
Okay, so the same for this other assets. Okay, so that is uh, that's uh, what the this public folder is for. Okay, so these are the things that will be made public on the internet. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is actually the entry point for your website. Okay, so uh, this is where the HTML, the head and the body tag is. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is actually forms the skeleton of your website. Okay, so you might ask, you know, then where does React come in? Okay, so the React components, they are stored in this source folder. Okay, and uh, you might ask, you know, how does uh, this, okay, so you can see like there's this React, uh, some React stuff here. Okay, how does this React link to this index.html? Okay, so if you expand this, uh, you go under the body, right? You'll see that there's a div, okay, a div uh, element with an ID of root. Okay, and if you scroll to the bottom of the index.js page, okay, you'll see that there's this uh, four lines. Okay, so react dom.render game document.get element by id root. Okay, so what this is going to do, okay, so this will look for uh, the element by the id of root inside the index.html page here. Okay, and it's going to insert uh, this game Okay, if you, uh, it's going to insert this game thing, okay, inside here. Okay, so for now, you don't have to know uh, how, what, what's inside the game. Okay, so you just have to know that uh, React DOM allows you to connect uh, your React uh, application to this index.html file. Okay, uh, so does anyone have any questions? Okay. Uh, then uh, before we move on, okay, so uh, just for you all to install one more thing. Okay, so this one is a quick install. Okay, so this is a browser uh, extension. Okay, so it allows you to view the virtual DOM of a React application. Okay, so uh, if you're on Chrome, you can download it from here. If you're from Firefox, you can download it from here. Okay, so uh, what this allows me to do, okay, so after I install, right, okay, you should have like a icon here. Uh, I think it's a red color React icon that says this page is using the development build of React. Okay. Then if you inspect element, okay, then uh, you can look for uh, like you can see there are multiple tabs at the top. Okay, so you can look for something that says components. Okay, so you can click on it. Okay, and this actually shows you the uh, virtual DOM of React. Okay, so you have the browser DOM, which you can find at elements. Okay, so this is the actual DOM, and then you have the virtual DOM. Okay, which is here. Okay, uh, is everyone okay at this point? If you're okay, can you please check off? Okay, or if you are still installing the browse the extension. Okay, then uh, if you have the extension, right, you can try and play around with it. Okay, you can see that there are some things inside here. Uh, this virtual DOM. Okay, uh, so Tommy, okay, so uh, you go to your application, you right click, okay, so you go to inspect, okay, inspect or inspect element depending on your browser, okay, then you see that uh, at the top here, there'll be a number of tabs, 
okay then uh, you won't be able to see the components tab here if i'm not wrong okay so you can see that there's this like drop down so you click on this drop down uh, you'll see that there's like components and a profiler okay yeah so if you click on components you'll see the virtual dom Okay, so uh, everyone good? Okay, so uh, Okay, does anyone need more time? Uh, or can I continue? Okay, okay, so now uh, Okay, two more minutes. Okay, sure. Uh, maybe 2.32. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, this uh, React profiler Yes, in this uh, virtual DOM, you only exist for red applications. Yeah, so you won't be able to see if you're not using a red application. Okay, uh, so maybe let's try. Okay, so let's go to Facebook. Okay, then let's inspect. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, you can also see the components. Okay, so uh, for Facebook one, okay, it's a bit complicated because the application is quite big. Okay, but you can still see their virtual DOM. Yeah, but you probably won't be able to understand what's going on from here. Okay, so the components is still governed by the HTTP 200 request. Uh, okay, yeah, in a way. Okay, so previously when you make a HTTP request, right, it returns you HTML. Okay, but now, uh, like when you click on the link and you make a request, okay, you will return something else, not HTML. Okay, you'll return probably JSON. Okay, and then the red application will uh, mutate the DOM based on the response. Okay, so it will not respond with a HTML page anymore. It will respond with some kind of data. Yeah. Okay, so um, is everyone okay? Okay, or do you need more time to uh, for this? Okay. Okay, so I think I'll continue. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, look into the index.js file. Okay, we'll see that there are three JavaScript classes. Okay, so we have square, bot, and game. Okay, so we have three classes. Okay, and what is a React component? Okay, so a React component is a JavaScript class that extends the React.component class. Okay, so if you see something like class something extends React.component, okay, you know that this whole thing is a React component. Okay, and every React component 
okay, you must have a render function. Okay, so everyone will have a render function or render method inside here okay, that returns uh, JSX. Okay, so JSX is like basically HTML. Okay, so in this case, the square, it returns a button. Okay, and then uh, the bot. Okay, so uh, it will call uh, this dot render square. Okay, so this is a function. You'll call it uh, nine times. Okay, and uh, for each render square, you will return uh, a square. Okay, so uh, what this uh, additional like uh, brackets around this square means, right? It means that I create an object of type square. Okay, so I create object of type square. Uh, and then I substitute it and I put it inside here. Okay, so if you go back to the React DOM, right? You can see that there are actually nine squares, right? Because uh, that's cause uh, I caught render square nine times. Okay, and then uh, where does this bot appear? Okay, so this bot appears in the game component. Okay, so you can see uh, this game component returns the bot. Okay, so I create an object of type bot. Okay, using these additional braces around it. Okay, and then uh, at the end of the file, you have a React DOM dot render. Okay, so what this will do, it will connect the index dot HTML, the this root, uh, this div element with the ID of root. Okay, it will attach a game object. Okay, into here. Okay, so this game object it has will return this. Okay, so it's the same as attaching this inside here. Okay, and then this bot here is the same as attaching all this okay, inside uh, the bot here. Yeah, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, does this make sense? Yeah, okay, so uh, it's essence. Okay, so a React component is a JavaScript class that extends the react.component class. Okay, and then it must have a render function. Okay, so don't worry if you are not familiar with this extends. Okay, so I know some of you may not be familiar with like object-oriented programming. Okay, so uh, you just have to know that this will create a React component. Okay, so in here we have three React components, game, bot, square. Okay, and then you can see that in the uh, virtual DOM. Okay. So some additional terminologies. Okay, so because the bot contains a square, okay, you can call the bot the parent component of the square. Okay, because it contains many squares. Okay, then similarly you can call the square a child component of the bot. Okay. So uh, let's finally make some changes to our application. Okay, so first let's introduce the concept of props. Okay, so what is props? Okay, so props is uh, basically data that is passed from the parent to the child component. Okay, so for example, the square is a child component of the bot. Okay, I want to pass some data from the bot to the square. Okay, so uh, let's say I want to pass like a value of uh, I. Okay, so what is this I? Okay, so I is a number. And where does this number come from? Okay, it comes from uh, below here when I call this dot render square. Okay, so this dot render square, it will pass in zero. So this zero will go here. Okay, and then this zero will be passed into the square using uh, as a value. Okay. Uh, does this make sense to everyone? Okay, and then uh, how does uh, the square receive the value? Okay, so the square can access it using this dot props dot value. Oh, okay. So this, okay. So this is a bit of like a object oriented programming. Okay, so you can say that uh, this is a class. 
Okay, so when I create an instantiation of a class, okay, that's an object. Okay, so yeah, if you use Python before, this is like self. Okay, but what this means is that, uh, yeah, so this refers to the object itself. Okay, uh, does that make sense? Okay, so in renders, okay, so in the bot here, right, we have a method called render square. Okay, so when I create an object of type bot, and I want to access this method, okay, then it will be like the this dot, I want to access it, I use this dot render square uh, here. Yeah, okay, so if you come from Python, then it's, a, it's a equivalent to self. Okay, then uh, once I pass this right on to the square, the square can access the value using this dot props dot value. Okay, and now I'm going to put this value inside the button uh, that is written by the square. Okay, so now if I go back to the React application, okay, I will see that there's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this comes from here. Okay, uh, does this make sense? Or is anyone lost? Okay, so now if you go to the uh, virtual DOM, you click on any of the elements square. Okay, so this square has a props. Okay, and this has a value of zero. Okay, then if you click on the others, you can see that oh, the props has a value and there's a different value. Okay, yeah, so the other thing that I forgot to mention is that if you want to run JavaScript okay, inside HTML, inside JSX, okay, you have to add a curly braces. Okay. Because uh, this dot render square itself, right, this is a JavaScript code. Okay, so uh, I cannot miss out the curly braces. If I miss out the curly braces, right, you will treat it as text. Okay, so you will treat it as uh, Part of the uh, you'll treat it as text, lah, yeah. Okay, so I have to ensure that I have a uh, curly braces inside. Okay, then this will actually uh, call the code render square and it will return the square. Okay, so is everyone okay? Okay, so that's all for just the first part. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now right, you realize right that uh, this square. Uh, it returns a button. Okay, but this button uh, doesn't really do anything. Okay, so when I click on each of these, right, uh, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so now I want to add something to these buttons. Okay, so uh, what I can do is uh, add an additional field to the button and I say on click. Okay, equals to. Okay, and I pass in a, a function. Okay, alert, uh, click on square, this dot props dot value. Okay, so a few of things to unpack here. Okay, so this on click view tells uh, the button what to do when you click on it. Okay, so this uh, uh, additional thing here, okay, is saying that uh, this thing is a function. Okay, so this is a function that takes no arguments. Okay, so the equivalent is to say I have a function that does this. Okay, so when you click on the button, okay, it will trigger this function, and this function will alert, click on square, okay, and then this dot pops dot value. Okay, and this is a string interpolation. Okay, so this is a JavaScript thing. Okay, so if you start and end your string with a tilde, uh, not a tilde, okay, with a back tick, the back tick is uh, below the escape button. Okay, so you with a back tick, you have a back tick, then you can put values inside this string uh, using the dollar braces, uh, using dollar braces, yeah. Okay, 
So what this does, okay, so now I save and I go back to my square. I click on anything. Oops, okay, uh, looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Okay. Where are? Ah, okay, so uh, if I click on like a button, I click on the square 4, it will tell me uh, click on square 4. Okay, so this is what the alert function does. Okay, so this is to add interactivity to the React component. Okay, so on click takes in a function and triggers that function when the button is clicked. Okay, so uh, everyone good? Uh, anyone got questions? Okay, so uh, if you are a bit lost, you can refer to my GitHub. Okay, so I'm at the two dash interactive now. Okay, so then I'll move on to the next part, okay, which is a uh, state. Okay, so previously you saw that props, right? Is data that is passed from the parent to the child component. Okay, so what if the component itself wants to store state? Okay, so we use something called the state object okay so this refers to data that is stored in the component and it makes it stateful okay and these values can be accessed using this dot state dot value okay so uh, let me just show you in the code okay so in order to use state i will have to define a function called the constructor Okay, and this constructor will take in props. Okay, it will call super props. Okay, and then uh, we can say this dot state equals to value in now. Okay, so this might seem very confusing at first. Okay, so I'll just uh, break this down. Okay, so the constructor, uh, okay, so this is a function, okay, that is called whenever you initialize the square. Okay, so for example, when I call square here, okay, and when it's being created, you will call this constructor. So this constructor is a special function. Okay, and this constructor will take in the props. Okay, so the props refers to the values passed here. Okay, so for example, if, uh, like I say square value equals to i, okay, so the props will actually look like this. So props will look like value i, okay, return an object that is like value i, okay. So if you come from a Python background, okay, so this is an analogy to the init function, okay, for a class. Okay, and what you'll do is that you'll call super props, okay. So the rationale is that because the square uh, extends the React component. Okay, so this one is uh, more of an object-oriented thing. Okay, but what it has to do, it has to call the constructor of this React.component. Okay, so if I uh, go to the definition of this. Okay, so uh, the square extends React.component. Okay, that means the square is a React component. Okay, so then if I go to the constructor, Okay, so this uh, react.component also has a constructor. So in order for this square to call the constructor of the react component, I have to use super props. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so this one might be very uh, confusing for some of you. Okay, but uh, you don't have to understand how it works. Just know that whenever you want to use state, you have to add these two functions. Okay, so some questions. Okay, so from Rohang, what is the difference between constructor and render? Okay, so render right is uh, what is being shown. Okay, what will be okay? So for this square right, okay, what will it return? Okay, what will it show? Okay, so in this case, this square will show a button. Okay, so you I use this render to show the button. Okay, so this constructor right uh, is just a function that is called 
uh, when this square is created. Okay, so it's different from the render, okay, but it's also a special function. Okay, so this is kind of like to initialize the object. Okay, so this is uh, like when I create this square, I want to create a state object on this square. Okay, so therefore I put it inside the constructor. Okay, so uh, next question by Ken is extending class inheritance. Yes, okay, so if you're familiar with OOP, okay, so the extends uh, is uh, inheritance. Okay, so you can see that the square is a React component. Okay, so therefore the square extends on the React component. Okay, so another question by Quan Ming. Okay, can we use props as a state? Okay, so uh, you can use the values from the props as a state. Yes. Okay, so uh, I can do something like uh, props dot value. Okay, so I can take a value from the props and I put it into the state. Okay, so uh, any more questions? Uh, does this answer your questions? Uh, or is there anything you need to clarify? Okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully this is clear. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this uh, this Zoom uh, lecture is being recorded. Yeah, so uh, the slides will still be here. Okay, so the slides is at bit.ly slash uh, hacker school 2020. Okay, so you can find the slides here. The recording, I think we'll email, email you all later okay, to where you can find the recording. Okay, so what's the difference between props and state? Okay, so both sounds like it has value. Okay, so uh, we go into the slides, okay. So props refers to data that is passed from the parent to the child component. Okay, so uh, any data that the square, okay, if I wanna pass data from the bot to the square, I do so using props. Okay, so if I want the square uh, to store the, uh, like store the data, right, then I use uh, state. Okay, uh, does that make sense? Okay, can. Okay, so the value can be accessed uh, using uh, this dot state dot value. Okay, so uh, right now I create a state object, okay, and it a, has a value of now. Okay, so I can change this to this dot state dot now. Sorry, no, uh, this dot state dot value. Okay, and at the start, this is going to be equals to now. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, so when you go back here uh, and refresh, okay, you auto refresh, okay, then you will see that there's nothing inside here. Okay, so when the value is now, okay, it's not going to return anything. Okay, so let's say I change it to like x, for example. Okay, then I'm gonna see that all the values inside here is x. Okay, so this is the values that is stored inside the state. Okay, so I'll just set it to now first. Okay, because at the initial point in time, okay, when you initialize the tic tac toe bot, okay, there's nothing. Okay. Okay, so uh, this on its own is not very useful, right? So, uh, I want to be able to click on the button, you know, and then something changes. Okay, so I can actually put this inside here. Okay, so that means uh, when I click on the button, I want it to do something to the state. Okay, so I can uh, do something like this. Okay, so on clicking the button, I'm going to use this special function called set state. Okay, so this is a special function provided by React. Okay, so you may be wondering why this set state function is not like defined here. Okay, it's actually defined inside the React dot component class. Okay, and because the square extends from this React dot component class, okay, so you're able to call the set state uh, function that belongs to this class. Okay, so if you're not again, if you're not familiar with OOP, don't worry, just know that. Uh, you can call this set state function, okay, and uh, I will change the value. Okay, so this set state right, it takes in an object. Okay, so this object must be of the same uh, structure as the one above here. Okay, so now I will change it to value of x. Okay, so 
uh, now if I go back and I click on any of these buttons or any of these squares, okay, it will turn into an X. Okay. And uh, just to recap how that happens, okay, so firstly when you click on the button, you will trigger this on click. And this on click will change this this dot this dot state object okay to this object. Okay. Uh, and then you will set the value of it to x. Okay, and then because this this dot date dot value changes, okay, so what is being shown here will also change. Okay, so uh does anyone have any questions? We hope I haven't lost you yet. Okay. Okay, so now we have like kind of like a template, you know, for our application uh, for our tic tac toe game. Okay, so Rob Hang asks, can you have multiple states? Okay, uh, you can only have one state object uh, inside the each component. Okay, so if you want to keep track of multiple things, okay, you will have uh, like another field. Okay, so you can say value two uh, is now. Okay, so you just uh, keep on adding on. Okay, so Owen has a question. Okay, so uh, why not just use this dot state dot value equals x? Okay, so uh, that's a good question. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through why later. Okay. Okay, so uh, before I talk about that, okay, we'll move on to the next part first. Okay. So now we want to uh, start coding the logic for this application. Okay. Uh, because we want to know, you know, how will we know whether a game is won? Okay, so we need to keep, need something, right, to keep track of the state of each square, right? So I need to keep track, uh, like if, for example, these three squares are x, right? Uh, then it's considered a win, okay? So the question is how should we do that? Okay, so should we have the bot component, okay, this bot component, retrieve the state of each square? Okay, so should we have this bot component, ask the square for what's inside your this dot state? Okay, so actually the answer is no. Okay, because uh, this means that the state is being passed from the child component, which is a square, to the bot, which is the parent component. Okay, so in React, the state should always be passed downwards. Okay, the state should always be passed from the parent to the child component. Okay, so how do we deal with this issue? Okay, so... Um, okay, so if the state of two child elements depend on each other. So in this case, right, the state of each square depends on each other, right? Because uh, we need to know the other person's state in order to know whether, uh, like who won, you know? Okay, so if two child elements depend on each other in some way, the state should be moved to the parent element. Okay, so instead of uh, the state being stored in each square, I should have the state being stored inside the board. Okay, so instead of uh, keeping inside each square, I'll have like an array, an array of like nine uh, elements. Okay, and you will look something like this. You will keep track of the state of the board. Okay, and this is known as uh, lifting state up. Okay, so uh, let's try to code out this solution. Okay, so uh, you can better understand what I'm trying to Okay, so uh, now we'll, okay, so just now we changed this. Okay, so now the state is no longer stored on the square, it will be stored in the board. Okay, so we can just go ahead and remove this constructor. Okay, and we can change this to this dot props dot value. Okay, then uh, I can go ahead and remove this on click function. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll put the constructor inside the bot. Constructor. This constructor will take in the props. Okay, it will call super props. Okay, so again, you don't need to know what this does. Okay, then you will set this 
dot state dot uh, uh this dot state equals to an object okay and in this object we're going to have a few called squares and these squares will be an array of size 9 okay and each element in the array will have a now value okay so this is uh, equivalent to something like this so now 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 okay nine times okay so that is just to make the code to meter okay so i have an array of size 9 filled with the value now okay so then uh, what values should I pass to the square? Okay, so now that I reverted back to here, okay, you see that now it's back to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so actually now, okay, so this i, right, is actually passing the, the position of each of these squares. Okay, so now what I want to do is instead uh, pass what is, the, uh, what, what is at the index of this squares array. Okay, so I can do this dot state dot squares okay this is an array then i can access its i index okay then now if i save it uh, not gonna do anything okay but let's say if i fill all the squares with x right okay then now i'll see there's all x and then if i fill this array with o then all of them are going to be o yeah, but because uh, at the start, there's uh, nothing on the board, so we'll just do... Okay, so uh, there's a problem now. Okay, so previously, uh, when you click on the square, right, there is going to be, like, the X will appear. But now the X doesn't appear anymore. Okay, so why is that? Okay, so that is because we uh, removed the onclick function. Okay, so uh, we have to find some way for the square, okay, to modify the state of the board. Okay, so you have to kind of find a way to modify these squares. Okay, but there's currently no way to do it. Okay. So, uh, how would, okay, so the question really is, you know, how would the child modify the state of the parent? Okay, so what, what the parent will do, okay, so the parent will pass down a function Okay, to the to the child component that allows it to modify its state. Okay, so uh, let's see what this means. Okay, so now I will define another function called handle click. Okay, and uh, we can do con squares. Okay, so what this will do, it will make a copy of uh, this array. Okay, so uh, this dot state dot squares refers to this array of size 9. Okay, when I call a slice on it, okay, I'm making a copy of this array. Okay. Then I can set these squares at the index to be equals to x. And then now I have this new squares object. I can do this dot set state. Okay. Uh, a new object of squares uh, of squares. Okay, so I create a new object that matches the structure of this. Okay, and I pass it this new squares array with the i index uh, set to x. Okay, so uh, is everyone okay at this point? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so there must be a way for me to pass this handle click function to the square. Okay, and we can do so by passing this function as a prop. Okay, so previously I only had one prop which is the value to be displayed in that square. Now what I can do also uh, is to pass a prop called on click okay and this is going to be a function that calls this dot handle click of i
Okay, and then uh, now I have this on click props that is passed to the square. Okay, so I can actually uh, invoke it by doing on click equals to this dot props. Okay, so uh, it will be a function that will call the this dot props dot on click. Okay, so this is probably one of the more difficult parts to uh, kind of understand. Okay, so uh, is everyone okay? okay? So now if I go back to the application, okay, it will work. Okay, uh, is anyone, is everyone okay? Or does anyone want me to repeat uh, to go through the thing again? Because I think this part might be uh, the most confusing part really. Of this tutorial. Okay, uh, all good. Okay, uh, let me go through again. Okay, so previously, uh, when we are at this point, okay, we want to know whether the game is won. Okay, so how do we know that the game is won? Okay, we need to compare the states of each of the square. Okay, so if we have something like this, 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 I want to compare the state of these three buttons. Okay, and uh, if they match, then I know that I have won. Okay, so therefore, right, we must have a way to kind of get the state of each of these squares. Okay, but it is not recommended practice for the board, okay, which is the parent component, to get the state from the square. Okay, so we'll bring the state okay up to the bot okay which is known as lifting state up okay uh rohang is that okay before i continue okay so we are owen has another question can you set the button on click to this dot prop to on click uh yes you can actually yeah okay but this uh yeah so something like this right It also works as well. Okay, but just that uh, this might be more clear. Okay, so uh, okay, so the next part is uh, okay. So now I want to bring the state from the square to the bot. Okay, so let's go back to the position just now. So previously, the state of the square contains the value. Okay, so now I want this value to be stored inside the board instead. Okay, so I will take this constructor, I remove it from the square, and I put it inside the board. Okay, so then uh, this square will no longer have any more state. Okay, so I'll change this to props. Okay, so the value will be taken from the parent rather than being stored inside this component. Okay, then I temporarily remove this on click. Okay, so now when you click on this square, it will not do anything. Okay, so it will do something like this. Okay, so why is there 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Because I'm taking this dot props dot value. Okay, and this props value is just uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Okay, so now the state, okay, you should store uh, the values for each of the individual squares. Okay, so uh, let me change this to squares. Okay, and this squares is an array of size 9 and is filled with the now value. Okay, so instead of like each one having its own now value, okay, I now have an array of now values, okay, and each index of this array represents the state of each individual square. Okay, and how do I pass these values inside the squares onto the square itself? Okay, so I can do this dot squares, okay, this dot state dot squares at the index i. Okay, 
So when we call this dot render square, okay, what is it going to do? It's going to return a square. And the value that this square has is equals to the index i of this squares array inside the state. Okay, which is initially set to now. Okay. Okay, but the, the problem is previously, you know, we removed the on click uh, field here. Okay, so we need to find a way for this square. Okay, so when you click on this button, right, it has to modify the state object of the bot. Okay, so when I click here, it has to modify this array. Okay, so how can this be done? Okay, so we can define a new uh, function. Okay, called a uh, handle click. Okay, that takes in the index i. Okay, what you will do is that you will create a copy of the current state. Okay, you will need a copy of the squares. Okay, you will set the index at this particular index, okay, to be equals to x. And then it will do a this dot set state. Okay, so this is to make changes to the state. Okay, so you will uh, have a key of type squares and the value will be this squares with the index i changed. Okay, so actually, uh, some of you might be asking, you know, why not I just do this dot state dot squares i is equals to x. Okay, instead of uh, like these three lines, you know, wouldn't this be a lot easier? Okay, so uh, I'll talk about this later on. Okay. So what we're doing here, you make a copy of the squares, you set the index of the squares to be x and you set the state. Okay, so now when you render the square, you're passing one more additional prop, a uh, prop called on click. Okay, so this on click, uh, you'll pass on a uh, lambda function, okay, a function that does this dot uh, handle click. So you will call. Okay, so uh, when you uh, when you pass this prop right, this on click right, you are passing a function. And when this function is triggered, okay, you will uh, call this handle click i. Okay, and this will uh, set the state of these uh, squares. Okay, will change the state of these squares. Okay, so this on click function, okay, will change the state of these squares. Okay, so now I pass this function down to the square. So this square will be able to access it. Okay, so on click equals to a function that will trigger this dot props dot on click. Okay, so when you click on this button, you will call this dot handle click inside the parent component, you will call this, and then you will change the state of the parent component. Yeah, so I think that was a bit lengthy explanation. Okay, but hope this makes it clearer for you. Uh, anyone has any more questions? Okay, so now when you click on any of the squares, okay, it will uh, set the state of this square. Okay, so. Okay, so now we will go back to the question that Owen asked earlier. Okay, so why do we use this dot set state you know, instead of modifying this dot state directly? Okay, yeah, so why don't we just set this dot state dot value equals to x? Okay, so the rule of thumb, right, in React is that you should not, uh, actually you should not uh, modify this dot state directly. Okay, and create a copy of this dot state and pass it into this dot set state. Okay, the rationale is because uh, in React, okay, because I talked earlier about the diffing function, right? So the diffing function takes in, it compares between two objects. Okay, so for example, if my current state is an object with uh, x, y, z, okay, and it has some value, 
and I make some changes to, uh, I make a copy of this current state, okay, and I set the value of y to four, okay, because React uses a different algorithm, okay, so I need to have at least two things to compare, okay, so, uh, if I make a copy of the current state, okay, I'll be able to compare, whereas if I were to modify the value of the current state directly, there will be nothing for React to compare to. So the diffing, the diffing algorithm will stop working. Okay, so if I just directly change this to four, okay, then React cannot execute the diffing algorithm. Okay, so uh, yeah, does this make sense? Okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think there's a lot of things to digest. Okay, so if you're still feeling a bit lost, okay, do go back to the tutorial and, uh, and con uh, read up again. Okay, so now I'll move on. Okay, so I think uh, probably the part on prop and state is probably the most difficult to understand conceptually inside this uh, workshop. Okay, so now... Uh, Okay, so this is just an additional uh, thing. Okay, so this is not very important for the application. Okay, so this is just a React feature. Okay, so it's something called function components. Okay, so it says that if a component does not store any state, okay, we can use a JavaScript function instead of an entire class. Okay, so, um, so previously we have this uh, class, okay, it's the square class. Okay, we realized that, you know, we moved the state to the bot. Okay, so this square does not have any more state. Okay, so what I can do is just change this square class okay, into a function. Okay, and this function will not have the render uh, function anymore. Okay so, that, okay, so instead of class, this is a function. Okay, and I can remove the extends react.component. And then uh, this function will no longer have any more render. Okay, so it will just look like this. You will return the HTML directly. Okay, and then uh, this function will take in the props. Okay, and uh, I can remove the this dot okay, from all the this dot props. Okay, so then now if I save it, Okay, so you'll look the same. Okay, yeah, but uh, yeah, you can see in terms of code, there's less code. Uh. Okay, so that is primarily the main reason uh, for doing this. Okay, so if a, a class doesn't have any state, okay, you can convert it to a function. Okay, uh, I think this is relatively straightforward. Okay, so I'll move on to the next part. Oh, okay, so Kwan Bing has a question. Why remove this from squares? Okay, because now the square uh, is a function and this function will take in props uh, as a parameter. Okay, so the this keyword, right, is only applicable for uh, classes. Okay, you can only exist within classes, okay, the this dot keyword. So if I use a function, I cannot use the this keyword anymore. Okay, so in the, instead, I'll take in a props parameter and access uh, this parameter directly. Hmm. Okay. Can. Okay, so this functionally doesn't do anything. It just allows you to write less code. Okay. So now you have something like this. Okay. And there's a problem with this uh, current application, right? Okay, so when you play tic-tac-toe, you know that X and O takes turns to uh, play. Okay, but you see that uh, this is not the case currently. Okay, so we come to our next part. Okay, so now right, uh, I want you to okay, so, so spend about maybe five to ten minutes okay, to try to implement this functionality. Okay, so, uh, so I'll let you guys uh, spend some time to try this first. Okay, then afterwards I'll go through the solution for this. Yeah. So this is like a bit of homework. Okay, so the hint. Okay, use a boolean value to keep track of the turns or whose turn is it inside the state and then alternate between X and O. 
Okay, so uh, I will come back at around 3.25. Okay, so you all can uh, give this a try, implementing this. Okay, so in the meantime, if anyone has other questions, okay, you can feel free to ask. Okay, so if you manage to get a solution right, also please uh, check off again. Yeah, so I can see you know if uh, how many of you are able to get it.
Okay, so uh, okay, so what does dot slice do? Okay, so uh, dot slice makes a copy of uh, something. Oh, sorry, I think I missed the dot slice here. Okay, so what it does, right, is that you'll make a copy of an array. Okay, so uh, uh, anyone else uh, managed to complete it besides uh, Rohan and Owen? Okay, so I guess not. Okay, so uh, I'll just go through the solution. Okay, so uh, what you can do, okay, is to keep track of a Boolean variable inside the state. Okay, so you can have something like x is next. Okay, so initially, uh, when you create the bot, okay, so they can specify that x goes first. Okay, so you can set this to true. Okay, so uh, okay, so when the person clicks, right? Okay, so like in this handle click function, okay, so when a player clicks on any of the buttons, right? So whether this is x or o, okay, so this should uh, depend on the value of inside the this dot state. So, uh, okay, so if the this dot state dot x is next, okay, so if x is next, okay, then I will use x, otherwise I'll return o. Okay, so this is uh, known as a ternary function. Okay, so if this evaluates to true, you will return x. Uh, otherwise, if this evaluates to false, you will return o. Then after every time you click right, the term will change, correct? So in this this dot set state function, okay, uh, what you can do is, uh, set the x is next, okay, because this uh, state must follow the same structure, x is next, okay, it will set it to, not this dot state dot x is next. Okay, so if x is next is true, then the next turn uh, x is next is false. And, and uh, likewise, if uh, it is false this turn, then the next turn will be true. Okay, so now let's save this uh, and we go back to our bot. Okay, so let's try that now. So x, o, x, o, x. Okay, yeah, so this alternating turn uh, seems to be working. Okay, but now. Uh, you see the x has won again, okay, but we are still able to continue playing. Okay, so uh, we need to do something you know, to kind of declare x as the winner. Okay, so this will be the next part of the solution. Okay, so uh, just to summarize what I did in this step, I added an additional Boolean variable inside the state. Okay, and uh, depending on what the value of this Boolean variable is, I will set the index of the squares to be x or o. And then after each turn, I will uh, flip this Boolean value. Okay, so uh, quite a minor change. Okay, but yeah. Uh, any questions for this? Okay, otherwise we can go to the last part for part one. Okay, so which is uh, declaring a winner. Okay, so uh, in the interest of time, okay, I will ask you all to uh, code this part out. Okay, so. Uh, you can notice that for this tic tac toe board, okay, so what are the winning positions? Okay, so you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the horizontal ones. Okay, then you have uh, the same for 0, 3, 6, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 0, 4, 8, 2, 4, 6. Okay, so these are the diagonals. Okay, so uh, we can define another function. Okay, so we can define this function outside of the board. Okay, so function calculate winner. Okay, so you will take okay, so what this function will do, right? You will take in the array of nine, an array of uh, size nine. 
okay, and you will check whether there's any winner. Okay, if there's any winner, you'll return uh, the winner. Otherwise, you'll return uh, now. Okay, means no one has won yet. Okay, so uh, I'll just uh, call out the different winning positions. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, then uh, 6, 7, 8. Okay, then you also have the vertical. So 0, 3, 6, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8. Uh, 0, 4, 8, as well as 2, 4, 6. Okay, so these are the uh, different winning positions. Okay, then uh, we can iterate through each of these lines. So for let i equals to 0, i less than lines dot length. Okay, so this is a for loop. Okay, uh, should be similar to most programming languages. Okay, so you can do uh, const a b c equals to lines of i okay so this syntax may seem a bit funny to you okay so what this means is that uh, okay so the lines i you have written a uh, array of size 3 and what this uh, notation means right is that a will take on the first value of the line b will take on the second value and c will take on the third value Okay, so A, B, C, okay. So first, we'll check if, okay, so how do we know if someone has won? Okay, so, uh, that means uh, if at the first position, okay, your value is not now, okay, and the position at B is equals to the position at A, and the position at C is equals to the position at A. Okay, so sorry, you should use a triple equals okay for uh for JavaScript. Okay, so if the square at the first position is not now, okay, that means is this is equal to either X or O, and the square at position B is equals to the position at A, and the square at C is is equal to the position at A. Okay, then we know that there's a winner. Okay, so we'll just return squares of A. Otherwise, okay, after we iterate through like each of these lines and we find that there's none, no winning positions, we will return now. Okay. Yeah, uh, does this make sense? Okay, so uh, let me know if you, are, you understand what's going on here. Okay, then what we can do, you know, is that uh, when we render, okay, so, okay, so coming, can you repeat the if condition? Okay, so let's say uh, we have a bot, okay, that looks something, an array that looks something like a X now now uh, now X now and then uh, now now X okay so we have an array that looks something like this this is the current state okay so uh, how do we know that this is a winning position? Okay, so uh, we'll iterate through each of these lines. Okay, so uh, for each of these lines, okay, I get A, B, and C. Okay, so if the position at A uh, is, okay, sorry, yeah, uh, there was an interruption. Okay, so sorry. Uh, okay, so your first check, right, is squares A. Okay, so okay, so we iterate through the first one. Okay, so if squares A is not equal to now, okay, so that's true. Okay, so A, which is equal to zero, this is not equal to now. Okay, then we check if squares B is equal to squares A. We check whether this is equal to this. 
Okay, so if it's not equals, right, we know that this is not a winning position. Okay, but let's look at uh, 0, 4, and 8. Okay, so in this case, A is 0, B is 4, C is 8. Okay, so if the square at 0, okay, is not equals to now, okay, so in this case, it's not equals to now. If the square of B is equal to square of A, okay, so uh, squares of 4, it is equal to square of 0. And squares of C, okay, so square at, uh, 8, okay, which is this position, is equals to squares of A. Okay, it means that these three, they are the same, okay, and they are not now. Okay, then you know that, yeah, that's the winner. Okay, so hope this makes sense. Okay, then you return the winner. Okay, so we, okay, so now we have this function, right, we can use it. Okay. Uh, okay, so just now I actually forgot to make some changes here. Okay, so uh, actually when you click on one square, right, it should change the next player. La. So actually what you can do here is uh, plus. Okay, then you can copy this line here. So, okay, so if x is next, then next is x. Okay, otherwise it's O. So then now you see that the values here will flip. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so now we want to change this status right to also account like in the case where someone wins. Okay, so what we can do, uh, we can do cons winner equals to calculate winner this dot state dot squares. Okay, so this will calculate the winner okay from the squares. Okay, so then uh we can do, instead of using a const status, we can use a let status. Okay, so uh, in JavaScript, when you use a const, it means that the variable is uh, immutable, means it cannot be changed. If you use a let, okay, then the status can be changed. Okay, so if the winner is not equals to now, okay, we will do something, otherwise uh, we'll do something else. Okay, so if the winner is not equal to now, okay, we can set the status to uh, winner plus the name of the winner. Okay, otherwise we can set the status to the next player. Okay, so uh, let's try this out. Okay, so now let's uh, x o x o x. So then now, uh, after every time you click, okay, it will re-render because the state has changed. Okay, it will calculate the winner. Okay, and if the winner is not new, there's a winner. Okay, then you'll state who is the winner. Otherwise, you'll state who is the next player. Okay, uh, is this okay for everyone? Or does anyone need me to repeat? Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think that is the end of the first part. Okay, so uh, there's actually more to the tic-tac-toe tutorial. Okay, but uh, if you look at the React uh, tutorial, okay, there's actually more stuff, you know, such as adding like time travel and storing a like, history of moves. Okay, but this is kind of like to reinforce earlier concepts. Okay, so uh, you can actually do that in your own time okay, if you want to better understand. Okay, but I'll stop here for this part one. Okay, because uh, I want to move on to part two. Okay, and actually, uh, part one took a lot more time than I expected. Okay, so uh, yeah, okay, so anyway, just a recap of the first part. Okay, so components are building blocks of React. Okay, so props refer to data passed from a parent to child component, state refers to data within stop within a component. Okay, so it's important to differentiate this. Okay, when the props or state has changed, the component is re-rendered. Okay, so if the state needs to be shared across components, okay, instead of, uh, you should store it in the common ancestor state. Okay, so in this case, uh, if the state of each square needs to be shared, okay, then we store it inside the board. Okay, do not modify state directly. Okay, so instead you make a copy of the existing state, 
Okay, you modify that copy and then you use this dot set state. Okay, so this will allow the react differing function to work properly. And if a component does not need to store state, okay, you can replace the react components with a function instead. Okay, so this is the parts that we've learned for the first part. Okay, so uh, I know now it's really 3.40, okay, and uh, we are almost coming to an end, okay, uh, but I'll still be around, okay, I'll be uh, uh, giving this tutorial to the end of it. Okay, so this might take like uh, maybe two more hours, okay, or, or, or something. Okay, so if you are busy, you need to do something, okay, so please feel free to go ahead. Okay, uh, this uh, lecture will be recorded, okay, so you, you, will, uh, you will receive an email later on, okay, for the link to this uh, tutorial. Okay, so uh, otherwise, uh, we'll take like a short break, okay, five minutes, okay, then uh, at 3.45, I'll start on with the part two. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to ask. Uh. Oh, okay, so Kwame Ming has a question. So when do we use uh, when do we use uh, semicolon in JSX? Okay, so uh, we don't use semicolon in JSX. Okay, but if you have like a JavaScript that you want to use inside JSX, okay, then uh, you can use semicolon. Okay, 
uh, let me try to give an example. Okay, so maybe instead of uh, using render square, calling this function, uh, I want to put it inside here. Okay, so what I can do is something like uh, I convert this into a function. Okay, and then I call that function with a value of zero. Okay, so this one will take in a value of i and you will return this directly. Okay, so we have to wrap this inside a bracket. Okay, so if we have something like this, okay, we use JavaScript uh, directly inside uh, the JSX. Okay, then there are some situations where you use semicolon. However, I think this doesn't happen very often. Okay, usually if you have this kind of logic, right, you will put it outside of the uh, return value. Uh, okay, so, uh, right, okay, so let's move on to the second part of the uh, tutorial. Okay, so now what we're going to do, okay, so now we have this tic tac toe. Okay, now we want to put it, uh, we're going to convert this whole thing into a website. Okay, so now we're going to do like uh, restructuring the application. Okay, so earlier you saw that, you know, there are three different uh, components, right? So you have the square, the bot, and the game. Okay, so normally in most rare applications, it's good practice to put all of these inside separate files. Okay, so what you can do, okay, under the source folder, you can create a folder called games. Okay, actually the instructions are here. Lah. Okay, so you can just create these folders and the following files. Okay, so you can create uh, games. Okay, so you just create a games folder. Uh, this games folder has another folder called tic tac toe and again .js file. Okay, then now you have the bot and square inside this tic tac toe folder. Okay, so now let's move everything from the index.js file uh, outside. Okay, so first uh, we can copy the square okay, to here. Okay, so it will give me an error. Okay, that's because uh, because this is a new file, I also need to import React inside this file. Okay, so I can do import React from React. Okay, so we don't need to import the React DOM because the React DOM is only used inside index.js to attach it to the HTML file. Okay, so React DOM dot render. Okay, so we only need to import the React file inside here. Okay, so we copy the square over. Okay, then we can do the same. Okay, so we can remove the square from the index.js file. Uh, we can copy the bot as well as the calculate inner. Okay, and we paste it inside the bot.js. Okay, and don't forget to add the import react from react. Okay, then likewise, you can do the same for game.js. So you just cut this. Import. And paste it. Okay, so you'll notice that there are some errors. Okay, uh, so you see that oh, there's some red underlining under each of these, and it says failed to compile. Okay, that's because now that you move each of these components into their own files, okay, so uh, they no longer have access to each other. So, in order to do that, okay, so uh, we have to export each of these components, okay, from their files, you know, export it. And then this component should be imported from the other files. Okay, so this is what I mean. Okay, so at the bottom of this uh, square.js, okay, we can do a export default square. 
Okay, so this basically exports the square. Okay, then if I go to the board, what I can do is import, import the square. Okay, import square from dot slash square. Okay, because the board and the square are in the same directory, so I use a dot slash. Okay, so dot refers to the current directory. Okay, so I import the square from the same directory. Okay, and you see that uh, this square is no longer red underlined. Okay, so if I remove it, okay, it will be red underlined. Okay, and otherwise, then once I import it, it will no longer be there. Okay, so now this bot component is used inside the game. Right, so what we can do is export uh, default bot. Okay, so I'm going to export the bot. Okay, then uh, this bot is used inside the game. Okay, so I can import it here. So import bot from dot slash game or tic tac toe slash bot. Okay, it's because the game is outside the tic tac toe directory, so I have to add the slash tic tac toe here. Okay, and you can add an export uh, default. Uh, game. Oh, okay, so uh, Chang Xuan asked, what if you export board and make square import board? Mm, okay, then nothing much will actually happen. Okay, you still have the error. Okay, because the board actually needs the square. Okay, so the board needs the square. The square does not need the board. Okay, so uh, it should be the bot importing the square. Okay, so you see that there is still an error. Oh, if it becomes recursive, uh, that's a good question. Okay, I've never actually tried that before. <laughs> uh, but you can feel free to try and let me know what happens. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so now the game, I also need to import the game. So import game from dot slash game slash game. Okay, so now this will compile okay so if I save okay so now I will go back here and I go back here okay then everything works uh, yeah everything works properly okay uh, okay but then this application right you know if you saw the Netify page just now okay the like the final product okay that's not just the game Right, there's also like a home page, you know, with something inside. Okay. Uh, so I will instead of uh, in rendering the game directly, okay, I'll create a new uh, React class. Okay, so uh, class I'll call this app. Okay, so extends React dot component. Okay, and this will uh, have a render function. And this render function will return the game. Okay, then instead of rendering this game, I'll render the app. Okay, so this is essentially the same, just that uh, I put the game inside the app. Okay, the reason being I may want to add additional things, you know, besides the game. Okay, so I refresh. Okay, so it looks exactly the same. Okay, so uh, any questions about this so far? Like the file structure, importing, exporting, is anything not clear? <coughs> okay, so uh, if all's good, okay, uh, what I want to do now is to add a home page. Okay, so, uh, okay, so now we can create a new folder called home and we add a new file called home dot js okay so this is another react component okay so uh, i guess what we can do is uh, just create a normal react component import react from react okay so uh, import okay sorry the uh, class uh, home extends react.component 
Okay, then the render function, you will just return a div element uh, that says, uh, welcome to uh, your, okay, Wehan's homepage. Okay, so this can be your name. Okay, so in this case, I'll use my name. Okay, so welcome to Wehan's homepage. Okay, so uh, this component is not being used anywhere. So for it to be usable, I have to add an export. Okay, so export default home. Okay, now I exported it. Okay, but it's not being used anywhere. Okay, so let's say uh, I want to put it in the app. Okay, so what I can do is uh, import home from dot slash home slash home. Okay, so I import this component and then I put it here. Okay. Okay, so now this is giving me an error. Okay, so what is the error? Okay, so JSX expressions must have one parent element. Okay, so this is a React thing. Okay, so you cannot return two objects okay, in a React uh, render function. Okay, you need to return one. Okay, so what you can do is actually just wrap uh, these two elements inside an empty braces like this. Okay, so now it just becomes returning one element. Okay, and this one element will have two children, the home and the game. Okay, so now if I were to go back to my application, or I'll see, welcome to Wehan's homepage. Okay, and then we have our tic-tac-toe game. Okay, so uh, is everyone okay at this point? Can you pass variables between components? Mm. Meaning, okay, so you can pass variables from the parent to the child component, right? So are you asking whether you can pass like between sibling components or something? Okay, so, uh, okay, so if you go back to the earlier slides, right? Okay, so if I want to pass variables between components, okay, then I shouldn't have uh, components. Uh, I shouldn't have the variable stored in each of, each of the components. Okay, so in, the variable should be stored in the parent's component instead. Yeah, so this is what is meant by lifting state up. Uh. So if uh, variables depend on each other, then I'll move it to the parent component. Okay, uh, does that answer your question? Okay, so uh, if you are interested, okay, so uh, sometimes the problem is, right, uh, okay, so, so like this bot and chow, a bot and square, right, it's like uh, one layer, la, right, so the bot, so, so there's like the immediate parent, okay, but sometimes you need to pass real bows, right, like uh, up many, many layers, okay, because you need to share the variables between uh, many layers of common ancestors. Uh, so what do I mean? Okay, so let's say like, like you see this picture right the top left. Okay, so let's say the leftmost component wants to pass a variable to the rightmost component. Okay, so uh, by right, what React recommends right is that you uh, store the variable at the parent component. Okay, so uh, yeah, but you can imagine right some React apps are very big, right? So sometimes it's uh, very tricky okay, to maintain it at such a high level. Okay, so there are actually a few ways React resolves it, okay, but I won't go through them. Okay, so one of them is called context. Okay, and uh, so this is the built-in uh, React solution. And the other one is called Redux. Okay, so this one is an external library, okay, so, but uh, it helps with uh, state management. Okay, but I won't go through uh, this implementation. Okay, so, um, so where was I? Okay, so I think this part should be quite straightforward, the importing and exporting part. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, okay, so now if you go back to this application, right, or you realize that this home page and the games page, right, they are on the same page. Okay, and that's not something that you want. Right? You want, uh, 
So if you go to the Netlify application, okay, on the main page itself is my home page. Then when I click on games, it goes to this slash games URL, and that's where my tic tac toe is. Okay, so uh, at the moment, okay, we are not able to do it okay, because we don't have the correct packages that allows us to do it. Okay, so uh, now we are going to learn how to add a package to React. Okay, so we are going to add this library called React Router. Okay, so what this React Router will allow us to do okay, is uh, if we go to the slash games path okay, on the URL, you should display the game.js component. And if I don't, if I just uh, use the empty URL, okay, so if I just uh, go like this, okay, it's gonna bring me to the home page. Okay. So in general, if you want to look for libraries uh, that you can add to uh, React, okay, you can go to this website, npmjs.com. And this is where you can find a lot of libraries. Okay, so in this case, we're just going to search for React Router. Okay. Uh, okay, so there are a few of them. Okay, so we are going to click on the second one, React Router DOM. Okay, so it will tell us how to install it. Okay, in this case, uh, it uses npm to install. Okay, but uh, we are using yarn package manager. Okay, so this one uses npm package manager. We are using yarn package manager to install. Okay, so what we can do, uh, we just copy the name of the library, okay, React Router DOM, okay, and we go to our terminal, okay. Uh, you can close the current one, Control C, and you can do yarn at the name of the library, okay. So what this does is that you install this React Router DOM library uh, inside the application. Okay, so yarn at React Router DOM. Okay, so you added your first library into the thing. Okay, so React Router DOM, uh, you can use three of the React Router DOM components, okay, to uh, to achieve what uh, this functionality. Okay, so first, uh, now that we have installed. Okay, uh, React Router DOM. Okay, this will appear in our package.json file. Okay, remember I talked about it earlier. Okay, so if you go to the package.json, there'll be an additional line here called React Router DOM. Okay, because now you have an additional dependency. Okay. Uh, so now if you go here and you can do something like import. Okay, uh, curly braces. Uh, browser. Router switch and route from react router dom okay so i can export these three components okay that are provided by react router dom okay then um in order to, okay, so we'll just take a look at each of the components. Okay, so what is a browser, browser router? Okay, so when you use this component inside an application, it basically adds a router. And for every application, there should only be one router. Okay, so routers will allow us to achieve this functionality. Okay, and the route, okay, this refers to like the individual paths, you know, so you can specify which components you display for each path. And then you also have a switch. Okay, so the switch works like a switch statement in most languages. Okay, so like Python switch statement, C switch statement. Okay, but the switch statement is on the routes. Okay, so you can think of it as one very long if else statement. Okay, so uh, the first thing we should add is the browser router. Okay, so browser router. And we close off the browser router. Okay, so we replace that uh, empty braces with a browser router. Okay, and then within this browser router, we'll add a switch statement. Okay, and in this switch statement, we will have 
uh, two routes, right? Okay, so this is route one, and this is route two. Okay, so in the first route, I want to uh, display the home page. And in the second route, I want to display the game. Okay, so I have a browser router. Inside this browser router, I have a switch statement, and this switch statement has two routes. Okay, now I want to specify uh, what path okay, goes to here. Okay, so I can do route exec path equals to a slash. Okay, so uh, if you just do route path equals to this, right? Uh, this is kind of like a, your match all. Okay, so anything that starts with slash, okay, you will return the home component. Okay, so but if I add exact right, this means that only uh, if you access this, you'll be able to access the home component. Okay, uh, then we can do for the routes. Okay, so path equal to slash games. Okay, so in this case, you don't really need an exact path okay, because there's nothing that comes after this route. Okay, so uh, now if you were to go back to the React application. Okay, uh, I have to yarn start again. Okay, now you see that, oh, I only have the home component. Then now if I go to slash games, I will see the game component. Okay, why is the slash after home and game, but before things like route, and browser router. Why is the slash after home and game? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so I think, uh, Rohang, I think, uh, uh, okay, so I think you need to understand like what this does. Okay, so uh, you can think of this as like a tree structure. So at the top of the tree, you have the browser router. Okay. And this browser router has uh, one child, which is the switch statement here. Okay, so this is the start of the switch statement, this is the end of the switch statement. And this switch statement has two children, okay, which is the first route and the second route. Okay, so these are the Okay, so for each element, right, there will be either one or two tags. Okay, there are two tags if there's a child. There will be uh, one tag, okay, if that element does not have a child. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it's something like this. So the browser router has a one child, which is the switch. Okay, the switch has two childs, which is other routes. And then this route, as a child, which is the home. Yeah, so this is uh, just HTML. La. Yeah, correct. Because the home has no children, okay, you don't need to uh, put it into two tags. Yeah. Okay, so this works like a switch statement. Okay, so you will try to evaluate this first route first. Okay, so if it matches this route, you will display it. Okay, otherwise, you'll move on to the next route. Okay. So now if we go to slash games, we'll actually go to here, but let's see what happens if we remove this exact path. Okay, so we just path equals to this. Okay, so now when we refresh it, right, it actually goes to the home page. Okay, because this will match everything that begins with this. Okay, so in this slash games, begins with a slash. Okay, so if you do slash games, it will match this. So you have to do exact path in order uh, to bypass this route. Okay, uh, does that make sense to everyone? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so I hope this uh, is intuitive and makes sense to you. Okay, so uh, as you can imagine, you know, if you want to have more stuff, uh, then you can uh, add more routes now. Okay, so uh, however, this is a bit inconvenient, right? So if you see, uh, if I want to go to a path, I have to manually type it in. Okay, and when someone access my website for the first time, uh, I will not know uh, that there is a slash games route, right? 
Okay, so we are going to add something called a navbar. Okay, so if you go to the Netlify application, okay, so I have a navbar on the top here, okay, which allows me to navigate to different places. Okay, so um, okay, so we are going to use another library for this. Okay, so this library is called a Material UI. Okay, so Material UI. Okay, it's a library that provides React components for common use cases. Okay, so in this case, the navbar is something that is very commonly used. Okay, so this material UI library will provide it. Okay, and it's based on material design. Okay, so this is a style used by Google for most of the interfaces. Okay, so for example, if you use Android, okay, so you will find this style very familiar because it's the same style used in Android. Okay, so uh, let's just... Uh, Okay, so if you want to look at the list of the components that Material UI has, okay, you go to material-ui.com. Okay, so in this case, you can search like the different components that they have. Okay, so uh, I'm going to look at the app bar now. Okay, so uh, you can see on the left menu, there's a lot of different components that you can use. Okay, so in one of them, uh, I just click on app bar. Okay, so it just shows me like the list of uh, app bars that are available. Okay, so if you scroll down, okay, then you can see. Okay, then you can see for each app bar, right? If you want to see how to implement it, right? You can click on uh, show the source. Okay, then it will show you, you know, how this is being implemented, how this React component is being implemented. Okay, so there's a lot of things here. Okay, but you can just copy it and add it to your application. Okay, so uh, in our case, we're just going to stick with the first one. Okay, the simple app bar. And this is what we'll use in our application. Okay. Uh, however, this material UI again is not a default package. Okay, it's something that you have to install. Okay, so if you go to your terminal, you can run these two commands: yarn at material UI slash core. Okay, so yarn at material UI slash core, and you can add yarn at material UI slash icons. Okay, so this will provide you some icons uh, to use in your application. Okay, so now that I've installed it, uh, okay, so I'm going to create a new component. Okay, and this new component is uh, going to be in the main source folder. I'm going to call it uh, navbar.js. Okay, so this will contain the uh, navigation bar. Okay, so what am I going to do now? Okay, so I'm just going to go to this uh, material UI page. Okay, I go to the simple app bar. I click on show the full source. Okay, I'm going to copy everything. Okay, select everything here and copy. And I am going to put it inside navbar.js. Okay, and I save it. Okay, so uh, you don't have to really understand what's going on here. Okay, but uh, maybe I'll go through again later. Okay, uh, but for now, okay, now you can change this button at bar to a uh, nav bar. Okay, and I can do, okay, and uh, this is already exported by default. Okay, but I can actually bring this below. Export default nav bar. Okay, so I export this nav bar component. Okay, now I can go back to my index.js. Okay. And I can import the navbar. Import navbar from dot slash navbar. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's in the same directory because I put it outside the games and the home directory. Okay. Then I can just add the navbar here. Navbar. Okay. And now if I go back to my application. Oh, okay, I need to start it again. So, yarn start. Okay, so now I can see that my bar is there. Okay, but uh, it doesn't look quite right. Okay, so uh, there's some extra space on the top and the left. Okay, so this is actually because of the original uh, tic-tac-toe. 
again. Okay, so if you look at the original tic-tac-toe game, right? Uh, there's actually some spacing at the top and the side. Uh. Okay, so we need to remove this spacing. Okay, so if you go to your index.css file, okay, at the top you'll see that there's a margin of 20 pixels. Okay, so you can just change it to 0 pixels. Okay, then now if you go back to your application, uh, it should look like this. Okay, and it has a login button. Okay, so this is because a lot of applications have a login button. But in our case, we don't really need it, so we will remove it after this. Okay, uh, so before I move on, uh, is anyone lost or does anyone need me to uh, repeat anything? Because uh, I'm not sure how quickly uh, that was, I went. Or any questions? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change this login button, okay, into two separate buttons, okay, and the home and the game. Okay, so we go back to our nefbar.js, okay, and we look for the culprit. Okay, so the culprit is here. Okay, so now uh, we see that this login is wrapped inside a button. Okay, so we can just make a copy of this button. Uh, and we can make two of it. Okay, so now we have login, login. So we just change the text inside. Okay. Home and game. Okay, so now we have a homes and a games. Okay, but when we click on it, it still does nothing. Okay, we want it to allow us to navigate, right? Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can import uh, the component called link from uh, React Router DOM. Okay, so what this link allows us to do, okay, is very uh, intuitive. Okay, so we can wrap this button inside a link. Okay, and we can say link and one of the fields we can do to equals to slash. Okay, so this will tell us that I wrap a link around this button. So when I click on this button, I will now be redirected to uh, the front page. Okay, then I can do the same for here. Okay, so then instead of slash, I can do slash git. Okay, so now uh, okay, you see that we have a link, okay, but it's a bit blue. Okay, but when you click on it, it actually works. Okay, so this is actually because of the CSS. Okay, so uh, okay, so now we'll just go a bit into how Material UI works. Okay, in order to understand how to uh, uh, remove that blue color tint. Okay, so you can see that uh, some of these components have a class name, right? And this class name, uh, it takes the classes from this use styles function. Okay, and this use styles function comes from above here. Okay, uh, so basically what it does is that you define the styling for these classes. So for example, uh, here, then we can use classes.root and this div will take on the style uh, that is defined inside here. Okay, so uh, I will just now add one more uh, style. Okay, I'll call it link. Okay, this is the style that I want to apply to this link. Okay, and I can say text decoration none. Okay, so uh, you see here that's actually like an underline. Okay, so this will remove the underline from this link. And then we want the link to be white in color. Okay, so we can do color white. Okay, and uh, if we scroll down to the link, now what we can do is we can attach a class to this uh, link by class name equals to classes.link. Okay, then I can do the same uh, for the other link. 
So now when we save it, okay, we attach a class to it. This class has this specific style. Okay, you will see that the link is now white. Okay. Uh, yeah, so is everyone following still? Okay, uh, so please stop me, you know, if uh, it's too fast for you. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I realized, right, is that, you know, uh, it's not very nice that our text is uh, at the side, at the top left. Uh, so maybe what we can do, you know, we can try to centralize uh, each of these. Okay, so you can use uh, CSS to do it. Okay, so uh, okay, so we go to our uh, games first. Okay, let's uh, try to set, um, move our game to the center. Okay, so we notice that this div has a class name of game. Okay, and where can we apply styles to this? Okay, we can do so in the index.css file. Okay, so uh, yeah, the current styling is done by index.css. Okay, how does index.css uh, reach here? Okay, it's because at the base component, the index.js, you actually imported the index.css. Okay, so this CSS will apply to all the components inside here and their child components. Okay, so you'll also apply to game. So in this uh, index.css, I can scroll down and I can find this dot game. Okay, in this dot game, uh, you can do something like uh, display flex. Okay, so uh, here's a great tip for you guys. Okay, if you want to know how to position your elements, you can use this website called uh, build flexbox dot build with react dot com. Okay, I'll paste it in the chat. Okay, and with this, right, uh, you can learn how to center your elements. Okay, so. Okay, so for example, now I want to put all my elements in the center of the page. Right? So I just click on justify content center. Okay, and then I can see that the element is in the center now. Okay, then uh, I can actually see what the underlying CSS is for this. Okay, so it says display flex justify content center. Okay, so I can just add this uh, justify content center. Okay, so I must add a display flex. Okay, but it's already inside the index.css file. Then the flex direction is a row. Okay, so there's the default value. Okay, then I can justify the content to the center. And now if we go back to our application, okay, you'll see that this uh, tic tac toe is in the center. Okay, and now we want to move it like a bit away from this, uh, from the nav bar. Okay, it's too close to the nav bar. So we can add another line. Okay, so margin top 50 pixels. Okay, so this will move the tic-tac-toe grid uh, 50 pixels below. Okay, and I think it's also nice if our tic-tac-toe board can be a bit bigger. Okay, so we can scroll up. We look for square. Okay, so we're going to increase the size of each square. Okay, so currently the height and the width are both 34 pixels. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to 50 pixels each. Okay, and I see now that the square is bigger. Okay, so I think mine is a bit bigger in my own application. Okay, I think I put it at like 80 pixels or something. So let me try that, 80 pixels. Ah, okay. So you can change the height and width of each square to be 80 pixels. Okay. So we can do the same thing for the home page. Okay, so uh, if we go to home.js. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, 
uh, assign a class name to this div and we can call it uh, home okay and then now we go to this index.css file we scroll all the way to the bottom okay and uh, this home uh, div okay so now this uh, dot home was used to style uh, this div okay so i can give it a height of uh, 95 vh okay so uh, vh refers to like the percent of the screen the height of the screen okay so if i use 100 vh right then the height of this div element will be equal to the height of the window okay so if i set to 95 it will just be the 95 percent of the window okay then likewise now i want to center it center the application in the center okay so uh, i can do justify contents enter align and terms center okay and uh, yeah so if i look at the css it now looks like this so i can just copy this okay then now if i go back to my application i see that my text is uh, at the center okay so uh, is everyone okay with this Uh, looks like don't have any questions. Okay, so we will move on. How did I add the navbar to index.js? Oh, okay. So if I go back to index.js, uh, you import navbar from dot slash navbar, and then you put it just above the switch. Okay. Okay, so now uh, I think this text is a bit small. Okay, so let's uh, maybe make it a bit bigger. Okay, so we can put this uh, welcome to the home page. Okay, we can put it inside a page one tag. Then you see now it's a lot bigger. Okay, so uh, I think we're almost done. Okay, with the application. Okay, so if you compare it to uh, this the one on Netlify, okay, it looks almost the same. Okay, so uh, the only thing missing is the pictures. Okay, and that's actually the last part of uh, today's tutorial. We'll learn how to uh, import pictures into React. Okay, so just a minor thing that I missed. Okay, so I forgot to change the name here, news. Okay, so you can go back to uh, the navbar component. Okay, look for where the news is. You can change it to whatever you want. Okay, so in this case, I'll just change it to uh, Wehan's website. Okay, so yeah, now it looks almost exactly the same. Okay, just that I'm missing a picture. Okay, so uh, is everyone following along? Does anyone need help? Okay, so uh, we are almost coming to the end. Okay, so if you are a bit lost, okay, you can go back to my repo. Okay, there's a number of changes that I made. Uh, so if you missed out something, you can refer from there. Okay, so let me find the branch. Okay, so now we are at this juncture. Okay, so the last part, uh, adding images. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys remember, okay, but uh, quite early on, you know, I was like describing what the structure of the application is like. Okay, so if you go to, uh, okay, so files in the node application. Okay, so then we can see 
Oh, the public folder contains files that users can access as URL. Okay, so uh, when you want to use images in React, okay, you're going to put the images inside the uh, public folder. Okay, so now in this public folder, I'll create a new folder called images. Okay, and I can just uh, go to Google, uh, look for some image that I want to put. Okay, so um, okay, let me search background white wallpaper. Okay, ah, okay, now I found the wallpaper that I was using. Okay, so I'll just uh, look for this picture. Okay, so I'll just download this picture. Okay, so you can use any picture you want. Okay, so I'm using this picture because uh, it was uh, looks nice. Okay, then uh, after I download the picture, I'll just put it inside these uh, images. Okay, so it's taking a while to download. Uh, but actually it's also inside my repository so i'll just download it from there so if i go to 12 images i go to public images okay so i can also download it from here okay so i will save the image uh, inside my repository in the public slash images folder. So public images. Okay. Uh, and I'll save it as like a background dot JPEG. Okay. So now uh, this picture is available in my uh, repository. Okay, so now uh, I want to import this picture into my uh, application. Okay, so I'll just go to my home page. Uh, okay, so then I will add in a image. Okay, so uh, I'll add in an image tag. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, and the source of this image is going to be uh, slash images slash background dot jpg. Okay, so this is the source of the images, and then the alt is uh, the alternate text. Okay, so in case the picture doesn't look properly, what text do you want to display? So I can just say background. Okay, then when I save it, and I go back to my application. So now it looks like this, and my text is on the right. Okay, so uh, I guess this is an issue with the flexbox. Okay, so I go back to build with flexbox. Okay, so uh, based on this current uh, CSS, okay, so the elements will be stacked side by side. Okay, so if I want the elements to be on top of each other, I will use flex direction, I change it to column. Okay, so now the elements will be stacked on top of each other. Okay, so uh, I'll just go back to my index.css file and uh, I will change, uh, I'll add additional flex direction, which is column. Okay, I save it uh, and I go back to my application. Okay, so now my uh, text is below my image. Okay, then uh, I guess our image is too big. Okay, so I guess what we can do, uh, we go back here to our image and we just set a height equals to uh, 500 pixels. Okay, so now uh, we call the application. Okay, so uh, yeah, 
uh, it's like a replica of the application that I have uh, online. Okay. Yeah, so I think we are done with this application. Okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so uh, yes, not. Okay, so um, okay, I'm not sure if uh, any of you are still following. Okay, but I'll just move on to the last step. Okay, so this is not really related to React. Okay, but it's uh, deploying the uh, application to Netlify. Okay, so what is Netlify? Okay, so Netlify is a company that provides free hosting services. For static applications, okay, or front end applications, okay. So if you, uh, yeah, so like just now this site here, right? Uh, I could deploy it using Netlify, okay. So you can create your own like custom name. So I call my React Hacker School. Then you can then you'll be added like a dot Netlify dot app, okay. And this is where your application will be deployed to. Okay. So the first step you have to do is to create a Netlify account. Okay, so you just go to netlify.com. Okay, and uh, you just sign up. Okay, uh, and uh, you have to also push your repository to GitHub. Okay, so uh, can I check if anyone here doesn't have a GitHub account? Okay, if you don't have, uh, can you click on the no? Okay. Because if you don't have, then I will just go through how to set up. Okay, uh, guess not. So uh, make sure you have a GitHub account. Okay, and that's where you should push your repository to. Okay, and then afterwards you'll link the GitHub account to your Netlify account. Okay, so um, yeah, so let me just go through this step by step. Uh, Okay, actually, uh, I think you guys might need some time to create the Netlify account. Okay, so uh, if you have your GitHub account and Netlify account ready, okay, just check off. Okay, I'll wait for a few minutes.
Okay, uh, can I check if everyone has a uh, Netlify account ready and uh, GitHub? Okay, so seems like. Okay, nice. Uh, everyone else? Or do we need more time? Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so I think I'll just continue. Okay, so um, we can first go to GitHub, okay, and create a new repository. So go to repositories, new. Okay, so you can call your repository whatever you want. I'm just gonna call my React application. Okay, so then the description, uh, React application for hacker school, you can put this as anything you want, or you can say uh, your own website. Okay, so I'll just create a new repository. Okay, uh, so now you'll be redirected to this page. Okay, then you can go to uh, your GitHub. Uh, so you can go to your uh, your VS code. Okay. And uh, let's see. You can do git remote at origin. Okay. So you copy this or push an existing repository from command line. So you just copy this command and then you run it. Okay. Then um, you can just, okay. Then you ignore the other two commands. You type git at okay and then uh, git at uh, dot okay so this will add everything to git okay and then you can run a command git commit dash m uh, create application create react application okay so yep you will see something like this okay so uh, is everyone at this step Okay, so just uh, three steps. You git remote at origin. Okay. You copy this from here. Then you do a git add. And then you do a git commit with this message. Dash m create react application. Okay, so. Um, okay, so after this, what you want to do is do a git push origin hit okay and this will push your repository online into github okay so now if i go back to my application and refresh it okay all my files will be there so my latest commit create real application okay so i'll be able to see it here Okay, so at this point, I'm expecting some of y'all to have trouble. Okay, so uh, please uh, sound off if y'all have any problems. Okay, anyone have any problems pushing it to GitHub? Or is everyone okay? Okay, so uh, it's a bit unexpected. Okay, but if uh, no one has problems, okay, I'll just move on. Okay, so now your repository will be in GitHub. Okay, so what you can do, you go to Netlify. Uh, okay, Netlify, you log in to your account. Okay, then you can click here, new site from Git. Okay, then you will ask you to choose uh, GitHub, GitLab, GitMarket. So choose GitHub. Okay, then you will probably be asked to authorize uh, Netlify. So in this case, I've authorized before. So it's working for me. And if I scroll to React, okay, so I search for my repository, React application. Okay, so I find it here. React application. And then the branch I want to deploy, I'll use master branch. 
Okay, and then all I have to do is click deploy site. Okay, and just wait. Okay, so then after this, uh, after it's finished deployed, my application should be online. Okay. Um, yeah, so is everyone okay? Does anyone need help? Okay, so I'll just wait a few minutes for this. Okay, so if you want to see what is the progress of the deployment, uh, you can just click on the, the deploy log. Okay, so you'll be able to see. Ah, okay, so now my site is live. Okay, so I just go back up and I go to uh, preview deploy. Okay, and now my React application is online. Okay, so but the URL, uh, right now is a, a gibberish. Okay, it's a, like randomly generated. Okay, so I want to change this to be my own site. Okay, so I'll go to uh, deploy settings, I think. Uh, okay, sorry, I'll go to site overview. I click on my site, uh, site settings. And uh, I can click on change site name and I can change it to whatever I want. So I can do React application. Oh, okay. So this name is already taken. Uh, so I can do uh, hacker school React application. Okay. So then now the website becomes hacker school React application. So if I go to this website now, dot netify dot app okay then uh is there yeah so did uh, anyone manage to uh deploy the application or is anyone having trouble Okay, so uh, if you're done, I guess you could just uh, check off. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so I assume the rest of you have some difficulties. Uh, I think my ad didn't build properly. It's showing the image screen. Okay. Uh, Quan Ming, uh, can I check uh, if you go to your repository, you type git status. Okay, what does it show? Oh, a lot of great stuff. Okay. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, run git at dot. Okay, git at dot. Okay, and after you run this, if you run git status, uh, do you see everything is green now?
Mm, okay. Uh, are you at the root of your directory? Yeah. Okay, so you have to be at the root of your directory for the command to work. Okay, so I guess I see some of you have finished. Okay, some of you might need more time. Okay, but uh, yeah, actually that's the end of the tutorial today. Okay, so I'll just conclude this uh, workshop first. Okay, then if you have any questions or need any help for debugging after this, okay, you can, uh, I'll still be around. Okay, so now that you've deployed to Netlify, okay, so uh, yeah, that's all for today's workshop. Okay, and moving forward, uh, here are some things you can explore. Okay. So uh, one of them, okay, probably the most important one, okay, if you want to become good at React, okay, is to understand what life cycle methods are. Okay, so I didn't cover this today, okay, because I felt this would be uh, conceptually, you need more time to process, okay, what, what this is. Okay, but uh, if you remember at the start, okay, when I was talking about the web architecture, okay, so uh, for the front end to retrieve data from the back end, okay, so it needs to use uh, life cycle methods okay, so in order to achieve uh, this functionality. Okay, so it allows you to do like asynchronous JavaScript calls. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you want to become good at React, okay, so this is something you have to learn. Okay, um, there's also React hooks. Okay, so I remember earlier when I said uh, you can change a function uh, to a class, okay, for things without state. Okay, so I think I mentioned it somewhere here. Okay, so if a component doesn't store any state, we can use a JavaScript function instead of an entire class. Okay, actually the thing is that I like over here, you can actually have state inside a JavaScript function. Okay, and uh, to do so, we use something called hooks. Okay, so hooks are the way, uh, it's like kind of like the, the way that React uh, wants to implement I want to be implemented, or the creators of React envision React to be implemented. Okay, so they want to get rid of the classes entirely and have all the components use functions. Okay, but that's a bit more advanced. Okay, but if you're interested, you can look into hooks. Okay, but uh, everything that you can do with hooks, you can do with components and vice versa, as it is with classes. So if you want to use uh, functions entirely, that's okay. If you want to use classes entirely, that's also okay. Yeah, but hooks allows you to use functions. Okay, so then uh, earlier I also mentioned uh, context and Redux. Okay, so these are uh, two ways to handle. Okay, you know, if the React application becomes very big, you know, and I want to pass variables from one end to the other end of the tree. You know, so I have to go through many layers of components. Okay, so that might be a bit messy. Your code might turn out to be a bit messy. So React introduced context, okay, so it's to help you manage state, okay, so using this provider consumer pattern, okay, so I won't go so much into details about this, okay, so the same for Redux, okay, so Redux is uh, kind of similar to context, okay, but it, to use state management, okay, it uses a centralized store instead, okay, so uh, last but not least, okay, a good way, a good thing to explore for React is also adding TypeScript, Okay, so 
uh, TypeScript is not actually specific to React. Okay, it's uh, TypeScript is basically just uh, JavaScript with types. Okay, so uh, when your project gets very big, okay, sometimes it's important to uh, implement types. And a lot of companies actually use TypeScript okay, so that uh, it's easier to understand what's going on in the code. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so moving forward, you know, these are some of the things that I will recommend you to learn. Okay, and uh, yeah, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you also learned a lot from it. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for coming. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so thanks everyone. Okay, so if you still have any trouble, right, or like you're stuck anywhere in your application, okay, I'll still be around, okay, uh, if you need me to help you. Okay, otherwise, uh, yeah, then that's all for today. Bar has a small margin around it. Mm, okay, so the source code uh, is in my branch. Okay, so this is actually my final branch. Okay, so if you go to this branch, you should be able to see uh, my source code. Or if you are talking about in general, where the, uh, how do you uh, look for, like, uh, what's wrong with my code? Okay, you can actually use the, you can inspect the element. Okay, so then you can uh, use this top left thing and just click on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, bye bye. Okay, uh, any more questions? Uh -huh, okay. Uh, I'll just be around here, lah. So if you need anything, just let me know.